start the meeting. Stand for the prayer. Today's session opens. We pray that your presence will be before us and everyone who serves in the decision-making process of our city. We pray for direction which will lead our city to be strong and unified. May we continue the legacy of our founders. May we be granted this day of wisdom to make decisions which will be good for our city. We also pray for your special blessing on all those who are working to transform our city, make it a better place to live and work. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice, justice. Roll call. Council Noon. Here. Council Rook. Here. Council Samaras. Here. Council Chow. Here. Council Conway. Here. Council Drinkwater. Here. Councilor Elliott. Here. Mayor Leahy. Here. Councilor Mercia. Yeah, here. Nine present. Right. Councilor Samaras, memorials. Thank, thank, you, Mr. thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a memorial that we want to dock in the chambers for Dr. Gertrude Bailey. Part of her obituary, it stated in, in front, she said, I want to be remembered as an educator who loved children. Dr. Gertrude Bailey, 95, a lifelong resident of Lowell, passed away peacefully on Friday, April 2, 2021, at Duville Manor Care Senior Care Center. A daughter of the late Angus J. Bailey and the late Gertrude Hall Bailey, she was born in Lowell on January 12, 1926. One of six siblings, she was educated at Sacred Heart Grammar School and the late and later Keith Hall High School. She furthered her education at Lowell State Teachers College, <laughs> University of Massachusetts Lowell now, and then earned her master's degree in education from Fitchburg State University. Finally, she graduated from Boston College in 1969 with a doctorate in education, later becoming the first Lowell teacher to earn a doctorate from an accredited university. A devout Catholic, she was a communicant of the former Sacred Heart Church in Lowell and currently Holy Family Parish at St. Mar Marie's Church in Lowell, where she was an active parishioner. Dr. Bailey enjoyed traveling both internationally or in the United States, touring in her motorhome. She also spent pl time playing cribbage, camping, skiing, knitting, and crocheting. Her legacy, however, will forever be the lives of the countless others she touched with her abilities as an educator. She first taught in elementary schools in Springfield for three years, and then moved to Bartlett School in Lowell, where she taught for 14 years, and served at Lowell State UML training teachers. She then served as principal of the Lincoln School in Lowell for the next 22 years, where she developed and implemented many innovative programs that have since been implemented throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. During her long and monumental career, as an educator, she also studied Spanish in Mexico in the 1970s to better serve the children within the Lowell Spanish-speaking community. After her initial retirement in 1987, she served with the Jesuit Volunteers Corps, serving in Alaska for three years as Director of Children's Services, advocating for children of victims of domestic violence and assault. She also volunteered in many charitable, civic, and cultural endeavors including as a member of the Board of Trustees at Lowell Catholic High School, member of the Board of Directors of Family Services of Greater Lowell, Lowell Catholic Charities, Food Bank, Children's and Performing Arts Programs at UML, Outdoor Concert, Lowell Folk Festival for 24 consecutive years, Winterfest, Lowell Memorial Auditorium, and athletic co competitions, among others. She was a member of the Massachusetts Retired Teacher Association Society and also a Society of Kia Woman Educators and the Ladies Ancient Auto Hibernians. Throughout her long and incredible life, Gertrude received many honors. Among them, the Massachusetts Elementary School Principals Association honored her as a finalist in the National Distinguished Principals Award, an outstanding alumni of the Sacred Heart School and Keith Hall. She was given the key to the city 
in recognition for her lifetime contributions to the city. Most notably, perhaps in 1991, the Lowell School Committee chose to name the school being built in the Highland section of Lowell as the Dr. Gertrude M. Bailey International School in acknowledgement of her outstanding contributions to the city and the students of, of the city of Lowell. Words can never adequately describe what Dr. Gertrude M. Bailey meant to the city of Lowell. In her own words, Lowell was her heart, her place, and always will be. In addition to her parents, she was predeceased by a sister, the late Mary uh, Sulacha, then and a brother, the late Reverend Justin J. Bailey. She is survived by her sister, Miriam Rourke Proventure, and her husband, Joseph, Joseph of Drake. Her brothers, Brandon Bailey of Drake and Kevin Bailey and his wife, Maureen of Westford, as well as many nieces and nephews, grand nieces and nephews and great grand nieces and nephews and an uncountable number of friends. I have to finish by saying, when I first entered the school department as an administrator, one of my first assignments was the, uh, was the Lincoln School, which uh, Gertrude Bailey, Dr. Bailey was in charge of. And she was in every way a principal. Uh, her students were the most important, uh, were most important to her. And working and supporting her teachers, who were supporting the students, was her life. She, she really was an educator, a teacher, in every sense of the word. Uh, she'll be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other memorials? Uh, Council Mercia. I'd like to offer a moment of silence in docking chamber for Mary Ivos Valcanus. Mary was a lifelong resident of Lowell and a graduate of Lowell High School. While in her senior year of high school, she volunteered to join President Roosevelt's call for women to serve in the war efforts during World War II. She was assigned to work at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. as a secretary in the Department of Defense, an experience she loved and often spoke fondly. She was asked to return home to help at her father's re restaurant business and to accept her high school diploma. She eventually returned to work with the United States government working at Fort Devens and ending her career after 35 years working at the Social Security Office in Lowell. Returning, retiring early to take care of her mother. Mary was an active member in the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church in Lowell, where she participated and volunteered for many years with the church's Greek festival and the city of Lowell's folk festival. She was a member of the church's choir and the ladies' philopticus society. Mary leaves behind her two sons, Peter and Nicholas Valcanus, her three grandchildren, and her goddaughter, who was more like a daughter, and her eight great-grandchildren. We offer our condolences to the family, relatives, and many friends. And I'd like to also offer a moment of silence and dock in chamber to all those who have passed on since our last city council meeting. They will be truly missed. May they all rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? We have dock in chambers. Thank you. Uh, next on the mayor's biz business, we have um, remote and Zoom participation. Need a motion to accept and place on file by Councilor so Elliott, seconded by Councilor Rourke. City clerk business, <clears throat> minutes of the finance subcommittee, March 23rd, city council regular meeting, March 23rd, transportation subcommittee, March 30th, zoning subcommittee, uh, joint with housing subcommittee on March 30th for acceptance. Need a motion placed on file <clears throat> by Councilor Samara, seconded by Councilor Noon. Um, communications. Uh, we have a public speaker for the first one, City Hall incident. Mr. Clark. Mm -hmm. 
Dasi Boya? Yes. Go ahead. You're all set. You have five minutes. State your name and address, please, for the record. All right. Good evening. My name is Darcy Boyer, and I live at 235 Avon Street in Lowell. I'm here to speak on agenda item 5.1 regarding the City Hall incident report. There's nothing like being named in an incident report requested by the Lowell City Council and conducted by the Lowell Police Department and only finding out because you have friends who pay attention to the city council meeting agenda. This report supposedly includes witness statements, <clears throat> but only managed to include interviews from three police officers and Mayor Leahy. My friends and myself who are named in the report were not contacted for our account of the incident. If this is an example of an investigation done by the Lowell Police Department, is it any wonder that the family of Moses Harris wants an outside investigation? This biased account is just one example in a long line of disrespect shown to the family of Moses Harris. Please, and support. please stay to the uh, report and do not editorialize it. Thank you. I did not have an opportunity to talk to this before, so now I'm talking to this process. But before. I'm not here tonight to address the contents of this report. I will soon release, we will soon release our own people's incident report because we cannot and should not count on established offices and mediums to accurately report on our lives and experiences. But before I go, I do feel compelled to ask those of you who requested this report what you hope to achieve, why you would further traumatize and victimize a family who has already gone through so much. Based on the meeting where the request was made, I can only think that you're using this family's trauma as a political tool against Mayor Leahy and punishing him, and especially his family, for daring to show real compassion for the grief of a mother whose son's body had just been discovered the week before. Have you reached out to the family? Have you heard from them what their experiences have been in dealing with the city and the police department? This is not political theater. This is real people's lives. So I have to ask, Councillor Conway, Councillor Chow, Councillor Drinkwater, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Mercier, Councillor Noon, Councillor Rourke, Councillor Samaras, Mayor Leahy, and City Manager Donahue. What if it were your son? You'd want answers too, and you would do everything you could to get justice for your loved ones. Black Lives Matter, Moses Harris's life mattered, Dante Wright's life mattered, and I'm in solidarity with all who are fighting for justice in our community. Good night. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Conway. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the uh, city manager, police superintendent Richardson and Lieutenant Cormier and others for this uh, report detailing the incident that occurred during the mayor's portrait unveiling on uh, March 20th. 2021. I submitted this motion to get a report because people have the right to know the truth, no matter where it leads us. Only through transparency can we put rumors, misinformation, and half-truths to rest. On Saturday, March 20th, there was a 13th planned demonstration uh, since the death of uh, Moses Harris, and that was located on the JFK Plaza. Two of the protesters were arrested. One of them refused to move from the blocking uh, a driveway area on Arcan Drive. This driveway is located on the side of the police station and towards the rear of the main fire station. That driveway is the primary and only entrance for all police vehicles and entrance for the fire department. In addition, the department regularly has ambulances coming in and out to respond to medical emergencies. That entrance is clearly marked, quote, restricted access, authorized personnel only, violators will be persecuted, prosecuted, end of quote. Blocking this area is truly a safety issue and can, be, and can put lives in jeopardy. The report also states that there was a disturbance in progress at the city hall where the mayor's event was taking place. Police were deployed to the area where they encountered the disturbance. During this time, 
police were subjected to swearing and name calling while they were trying to calm the situation. To further compound the problem, there was a discussion that was overheard to bail out two individuals that were arrested for disturbance and illegal weapons. I think we now have a clearer picture of what happened in March 20th, 2021. Going forward, uh, I think we need to make sure we learn a lesson from this experience in order to prevent such actions in the future. In conclusion, I'd like to remind the people of, of, a, of a motion and resolution that I submitted to this city council on 11 2 uh, 20, uh, which was to support, which was supported unanimously on a 9 0 vote. In part, it reads, quote, be it resolved that the Lowell City Council fully support the women and men who serve the city of Lowell and the police force and further condemn any or all actions to delegitimize, insult, harass, threaten, and or use violence against the institution of law enforcement. End of quote. Our police officers and our firefighters need to know that we support them not the people that break the law. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Council Mercia. Um, I did read the report, and I have numerous questions to ask if I could possibly do that. Mr. Mayor, have you or any member of your family joined the protesters in the past 12 weeks during their protests? I don't think that has anything to do I with I think it does. I think it does. I'd no, like to know. It doesn't. It's a whole other case. It isn't a whole Moses. other case. I'm asking you a question. It's another case with the Moses Harris family and then what happened at City Hall. What happened at City Hall was an incident that happened. Well, it could have been related. Before the unveiling, was there ever an offer by any member of the police department to provide an officer? or two to stand at the city hall entrance so protesters would not enter the building? No, I didn't think of that. You didn't think of that? Did they, they offer that to you? No. Could I then ask uh, Superintendent Kelly Richardson if he knows of anything like that? Because I think his name is here, so he must be here somewhere. I don't know. Superintendent Richardson? Yes, I am here. Um, Chief, I just was wondering if you or any members of your police department offered any police officer to come stand by the door so the protesters wouldn't come in by, by uh, mistake and w was that asked? Did you, anybody well, I ask? Back and forth. I, I had a conversation with the mayor, whether he heard what I offered, I'm not sure, um, but I did say if I have to, I'll put people at the door. And he basically um, started talking about something else right after that. So, so, he, so uh, you offered, offered whether, so you right, offered, he and he didn't accept it. He changed the subject. I did not well, change. I, the, I did not I, not yeah. accept. I don't even remember talking about that. You don't remember a lot, Mr. Mayor. That's what I'm trying to figure out. There was no ill intent. I was going to just unveil the portrait. And that you won't answer my questions. I'm certainly sure you won't even a answer the police. Um, Chief, did any of your officers ever imply or expre express to you that they thought this whole scenario was staged? It was thought about that. It was talked yes, about, was. wasn't it? Yes. It was talked about. On page five is a police report as a result of two arrests made. Lieutenant Fay authored Officer Laramore's arrest report to be included in this investigation. And in, in it, it states the racist words of a woman arrested, and she says to the officer, keep your hands off me, I am allergic to white people. And the mayor's office bailed racist people of this caliber out and defied the police department. I'm appalled at this, and I'm embarrassed for this city. Racism doesn't just apply to minorities, as you see by this report. We learned on page 12 that this investigation, that, that there were no cameras anywhere in City Hall, this must definitely be corrected. I really didn't even realize it myself. 
For the record, I want to correct one statement, and that being, when I met the police down in the basement, I told them that if they thought letting them in would create more unrest for the police department, I would leave it up to them on what course to follow. It was the mayor's brother, Dan, who suggested that only the plainclothes officer come in, to which they all came in. I followed the police up the stairs, and observing the confusion, I turned around and left the building. I walked to my car, which was parked at Cardinal O'Connell Parkway, and while passing City Hall, I observed the door on the side, and it was not left ajar. It was completely closed. The reason I say that is your assistant sent a notice that your unveiling was at 2.30 on a Saturday afternoon, and then, I don't know, hours later, it was changed to 2 o'clock, so not knowing if it was 2.30 or 2 o'clock, I called you in the morning and you said to me, it's at 2, and I, and I want you to note that you come in on the Merrimack Street side. I said, you mean the side facing um, Cardinal O'Connell Parkway? And you said, yes, because the protesters are there, and I don't want uh, to mix them in with us. So I arrived rather late. It was five minutes or two. I went up the front stairs, and I parked at Cardinal O'Connell. I went up the front stairs on the Merrimack Street side, and the door was locked. I went down thinking maybe he meant the basement. I went down to the basement. That door was locked. I said to myself, what is he even suggesting that? And if I didn't call you, I, I wouldn't have known. So I went to the mailbox down here, and there were a few people. Now the protesters seen us, and they started coming over with the bullhorns and put us all in a little bit of fear because they were rather boisterous. And that's when you showed up and went at the JFK Plaza side and opened the, up the stairs and opened the front door. At no time did I ever see anybody into the Merrimack Street side to avoid the protesters. I never seen any door ajar to let people in through that side. This was a complete farce. Um, I'm just not happy about all this that took place. It was very, very embarrassing. And I am appalled to think that one of your people that uh, works in your office as an intern was allowed to go and bail people out. And I'm understanding that there was someone there ready to bail those people out. And your assistant there said, no, no, we're the ones that are supposed to bail them out. It seemed rather staged to me. And I do know that your family did partake in the protests. And you kind of knew. Why would you have a, a, a unveiling when you knew this was subjected to happen? It's one thing to feel bad for people, but I don't feel bad for people that call me a white, uh, allergic to white people, and I am embarrassed, but that's my opinion. Anybody else? Hate crimes targeting Asians, Councilor Mercia. I'd like, to, I'd like to offer a point of personal privilege as to who, I, I would like to offer a point of personal privilege, Mr. Mayor, as to whose duty it is to schedule events in the mayor's office, as well as. You need a first and a second. No, you don't. I don't need a. I don't need a second on a point of personal privilege. I don't. As well as who has the duty of allowing outsiders the right to rearrange the mayoral portraits, Mr. Mayor. Can I just? Interrupt no, can I ask you a question? I have a point of personal I privilege. I don't want you to go on. There was, there's nothing to this, and you're going to go on. You're yeah, talk there is. It. If you listen to what I'm saying, yes, there is. Yes, there definitely is. Nothing happened out of my office for moving the portraits. Was yes. Oh, the oh, they moved on their own. Will you please let me continue, or I'll, I'll challenge the chair and allow a roll call on this. So whose duty is it, Mr. Mayor, to notify the city council at, as to events that are about to take place? Is it you or is it your assistant? I want to personally know this. I'm asking you this because I'm not getting any answers. It's me through my assistant. It's you through your assistant. 
please don't forget what you just said. Despite the fact that when there is an event and we get notified a half an hour before the event, leaving no time to cancel previous plans to time frame, you can check with some of my colleagues who will verify this statement, that we're notified, if we're notified at all, very shortly and we can't change anything. And despite the fact that my mayoral portrait was rearranged and replaced with Patrick Murphy's, who does not live in the city of Lowell anymore, imagine a sitting city councilor, vice mayor, longest serving member of this council, treated with the most disrespect to have her portrait removed and placed in a place that no one would ever find. And as I told you the other day, if I should die, or if I should not be serving here anymore, you can put my portrait in the attic or in the basement. You can even burn it if you like, but while I'm sitting in this seat, this great city, my portrait shall remain up where it is right now, as it has been for years, and I ask you to leave it alone. And despite a member of Senator Kennedy's office coming in the city hall and getting permission from your assistant, because that's what you Not said. Not get any permission from anybody. Well, he in told. My office. Well, he told someone that he got permission from your assistant. He didn't. We had nothing. To oh, do with oh, so he lied. So then he lied. Council Samaras submitted a motion. Yes, he did. That's my next through. statement. He submitted so, a, a motion and. And Jim Ostis, that came here from Ed Kennedy's office, said that because of Ed, uh, Bill Samaras's motion to, re that he, to rearrange the portraits, that motion said that. Well, that motion went to the Rules Subcommittee, of which I am a member, and the motion went nowhere. It did not become a law. So to summarize this, a person working for a senator who still has his job came to City Hall and tampered with city property in an effort to cause dissension on this council, and you, Mr. Mayor, did nothing about it, and he still has his job? What a country. I am so surprised at that. And despite the fact that the first time an injustice happened against me, and this council was last year when a teacher at, of 20 years at Lowell Community Charter School on Jackson Street was retiring. Your aide in your office sent out a notice of this event to all the city councilors. Then hours later, she then said the event was canceled. And a few hours later after that, she said the only, that only the mayor and his designee was allowed to attend and no one else as per the request of the teacher's family. When I called your office and asked your aide, who's the designee? I got no direct answer. I then proceeded to call Mr. Gignac at the charter school, and if you don't believe me, call him yourself. And I asked him if the family requested only the mayor and his designee, and Mr. Gignac proceeded to tell me that he personally knew the family and they would never, ever have made such a statement. And he invited me and the council to attend. I attended and the family was delighted to see me and the mayor's designee was Vesna Noon. And I should have stopped this unfairness then, but I kept this to myself. That the last straw, Mr. Mayor, and that's why I'm saying this, was this Saturday when the new company to establish themselves in Lowell on Church Street, Foodland International, why was this council not invited or made aware of it? The owners of the building are my friends, and I would have been devastated to not have been there to support them, to congratulate them, and welcome that new business. They have supported me ever since I've been a counselor, but yet I wasn't invited, so I probably wouldn't have went. I learned about this through Teddy Panis on his Friday show on WCAP. If he didn't announce it on the air, I would never have known about it. Former City Councilor Corey Belanger arranged the duties to guide that new business owner into the building and notified the mayor about this event. But you failed to notify this council. And for that, I am more than angry. 
And when I told your assistant how I felt and that I was going to say something today, she could only say to me, whatever, whatever, don't ever say whatever. If I should not attend an, an event, it should be my choice, not your choice. And I find it very difficult to attend an event if I never got notified. I can't be somewhere I know nothing about. I was born at night, but not last night. But I did get the paper, and as you can see, the charter school, the collegiate charter school on Middlesex Street, they added an addition. I'm understanding that they notified you about it. You wouldn't even think to be kind enough to notify us. There is a lack of communication, and that's what we ask of the city manager. Please communicate with us. We've asked every city manager that. This manager has exceeded, far exceeded that. You should learn by what this woman has notified us of everything, and you should too. We, we don't have access. You're, you're going on. This is a lack of communication in your office. Can I interrupt? There is a lack of respect. There is select favoritism, uh, and I, for one, am tired of it. Counselor, can I But enough one? is enough. Counselor, please. You no, I, no, I'm going to finish. I have the floor. This better end today with what I'm saying. Your office is out of control. Stand up and be a leader, not someone who is being led by a group of bullies trying to manipulate you to hurt other people, namely a few of us city councilors here. We know who's doing it, and we know what's happening. I am the wrong woman to push around. I want, I, I want this to stop, and I'll be done with May it. May I answer? First of all, you being a mayor, and Councilor Elliott was a mayor, and Councilor Smarrick, some invitations come in, and they don't ask for anybody but the mayor. I can't help that, all right? And that happens, and you know it happens. I and don't know you that. To no. sit here and yell at me, you know, I'm trying to be nice. You accosted my help, my, my assistant in the parking lot. Uh, what do you mean by accosted? That yes, means I hit her. I didn't her. hit her. You ran up to She's her. She's lucky I did not, but I didn't. Okay. And the only other thing is, I'm trying to be nice to you. When I talked to you a few weeks ago, you said something that wasn't very nice to me, and we haven't spoken since in probably three weeks. So for you to call up and say what you said to me with s such disrespect, I gave you a pass on that. If somebody in this room said what you said to me, to you, it would have been all in the paper. It would have been probably in the courts. So just think about that, please. Councilor Elliott. M Mr. Mayor, I th can we please, can your aide, and, and I'm speaking this from experience. Yep. <clears throat> City councils would like to know of events. I understand there are some events where they ask the mayor to speak. Short of that, usually it's just a blanket invitation. So. Would it be possible, because I think it worked pretty well uh, when I was the mayor, that there are regular communications um, on a monthly basis, and I understand on a monthly basis events come in after that. Um, I think it would be helpful for all of us to know, particularly flag raisings, ribbon cuttings, that they are scheduled and that we're notified uh, in advance. I think that's, that's, I know I would like to go to them. I agree. With, uh, with the you know the latest opening, those are people that are um, they're they're good people. They've been friends and supporters, and they're invested in the city. So, and I and I know sometimes there are issues that may fall through, but in large part, um, you know, just we just want fairness across the board. That right. some members aren't aren't notified because of relationships, and some some members aren't. I mean, so uh, look, I it's not a perfect system, but uh, those of us that are on email and text, we get it in a timely manner and just invite all of us, that's all. I think that's all I'll, I'll, we're asking from the mayor's aide. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Sure. Who's Mr. There? Mayor. Conway. Sure. Mr. Conway. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, just, just very quickly, I think that, uh, um, you know, what uh, Councilor Elliott just said there, too, is that, you know, some type of a 
I think some type of a calendar that is needed and a description of the purpose of the upcoming events that, with the with the dates and the time. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, and that, that can be distributed in, in a number of ways, which was just mentioned, uh, uh, whether it's an email or text messages or telephone calls. And I think by using a procedure like that, um, you know, it, it, it's not just a few counselors that get the information, but everyone will be apprised of, of the different events. And if we know them uh, in advance, we can also uh, change our um, our schedule and time so that we can, if, if that's an event that we'd like to go to, that we can uh, make ourselves available. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, some of the experiences that we had with, uh, uh, with uh, former mayor, uh, Rodney Elliott's uh, uh, aide, Celine Gettings, I mean, she was, uh, she was very good at that, letting everyone know so that, uh, you know, there'd be no excuses that uh, somebody didn't didn't hear about a particular event um, and uh, or a ribbon cutting or whatever it may be. Uh, so I, I think that if we can uh, have some enhanced uh, communication uh, with the councilors, I think that will end up going a long way for everyone and, and bringing things together. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, being after 7 o'clock, we have to go to the general public hearing. Um, they want to ask for a continuance for two weeks. Okay. So I'll open it up. Uh, order to abandon portion of Canal Street. Open it up. And then I entertain a motion to continue it for two weeks by Councilor Drinkwater, seconded by Councilor Noon. All those in favor? Motion response C, new election system information. Uh, Councilor Noon. This is the mayor. I, I think uh, motion respond B, um, Councilor um, uh, okay, Mosley has not. Any uh, questions yet, on, so. the, on B before we get to C? Councilor yeah. Elliott. Uh, on, uh, uh, no, we didn't, Councilor Mercy made the motion. I'll, Councilor Mercy. I'll speak after. Yes. As you can see by this report that there were no hate crimes against Asian Americans from 2018 to the present time with the numbers, I wonder if the numbers would have been different had I said violent crimes. I know that this would be the result. That's why I made this motion. My goal is to report these racist incidents. I ask that people do that. How else can we stop this injustice? I think there were many, many more than that, but people are afraid to come forward if they would have one person to go to. Now, according to this report, uh, they have a Lowell Police Department officer assigned as a hate crime specialist. He continues to receive training in hate crimes. He should be the officer to go to to report such incidents, and this could uh, be satisfied by the motion 10.9 with Councilor Noon, who says that he's asking for such a thing. So I completely agree. There should be someone in the police department to feel comfortable to go and report it because I believe it's happening quite a bit. It's just people are afraid to report it. And if you don't report it, we're not going to know about it. We're going to think everything's all right, and it isn't. So. That's why I made this motion, to prove a point. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Elliott, then Councilor yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, I concur with Councilor Mercy just because a report doesn't reflect any crimes. That doesn't mean that they're not taking place. Uh, perhaps we can take up Councilor Noon's um, motion. It's a good motion um, to, uh, while there is a, you know, we, People can report crimes to the police department. Sometimes they're just not comfortable making that phone call. And there's got to be, um, I think there's going to be an alternative way. And I appreciate the fact the chief has, um, is training um, an individual. Um, but I think we have to take it the next step so people know that they can call um, or text or email or contact somebody somewhere somehow that's not associated with the police department and then we can validate the information so 
I don't know, I know we talked about this when the motion came up, I don't know what the solution is. I, I'm sure we're not the only community um, that's looking to implement or uh, sorting, you know, we need to do something because they are taking place and because they're not a statistic, just statistic doesn't mean that um, that they're not taking place. So I, up when Council Noon's motion comes up, I, I think it's a good motion and we need to find an alternative method to allow yes. people that are very scared, they're nervous, and they're, the fear is of retribution that we give them an outlet to, to report. So thank you, Mr. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Chow, then Councilor Drinkwell, then Councilor Noon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, Superintendent Richardson, for the report. And uh, all, as always, thank you to the superintendent and the police department for always being very proactive and assigning an officer to deal with the, uh, the hate crime in our city. And I'm very glad that the local police department is supporting the laws that are being um, made out there to update hate crimes. Um, that, that being said, um, as the previous councilors mentioned, I'm, I'm not surprised with this data that there has not been any hate crime reported since 2018. And I think the reason why is probably our understanding and the definition of hate crimes. Uh, we think of a crime being physically violent, whether in, it be like a physical fight or um, gun violence and so forth. We often overlook verbal, uh, verbal abuse. Um, somebody could be calling other groups of people or another person uh, names, uh, racial names, ethnic names. And when you are called certain names, uh, uh, racist names, uh, the victim himself or herself don't really consider that a, a crime. So would most likely not, not report that. Um, secondly, when there are fights that, that break out, uh, whether in a public area or at bars or anywhere, you know, that's usually considered a, a disturbance. So if the police arrive at the scene of, of the crime, so to speak, um, they usually most arrest them for causing a fight, causing a disturbance, and so forth. But sometimes we have to understand why those fights broke out. Maybe uh, one individual or one group um, attack verbally another group and then they respond back with, with fist fights. So, but that might not be reported as, as hate crimes. So you have those issues of understanding what, what hate crimes are and what I was suggesting three weeks ago when this motion was brought up, uh, maybe have you know, upgrade technology, different ways of, of reporting, um, upgrade the system of reporting just like many of our constituents contact us through Civic Plus they can report, uh, identifying themselves or identify them uh, anonymously, not identifying themselves. So maybe in addition to having an officer uh, assigned to this type of hate crimes um, situation, but also upgrade the system, the methods of people can report um, easier. They can report in person or they can report um, through emails or technology or Civic Plus like what we have. Um, so I, I think some important steps and maybe work with different um, nonprofit organizations, make individuals, uh, people of color, can report to nonprofit organizations that they've been working with, and maybe once a month, the nonprofit organization can make a report to the police department. So that way, not to, you know, there's some hate crimes that doesn't necessarily um, demand some kind of arrest, but it does uh, re uh, demand some kind of an address that these issues exist in our city. And so that way we'll have data to suggest, you know, what, what kind of problems or no problems that we have to deal with. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Drinkwater. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My concern with this motion, and I did express it um, a few weeks ago when, when we discussed it, was that based on the original wording, it, it had the potential to produce a false sense that statistically, um, these hateful incidents aren't, aren't happening. Um, through the high bar of asking for data on, on hate crimes specifically, it's one reason why there was some discussion on the floor and, and I brought this up about 
potentially expanding the response to include things like harassment, um, incidents of harassment that may be reported uh, that in involve race, that maybe don't rise to the level of hate crimes. And um, I, I do think it's a little you know, troubling to have this out there in the public realm that you know, essentially the number of hate crimes over the past several years is, is zero. Because people are standing up. They are talking about hateful incidents that happen in our community. They might not be filing uh, reports with the police department, but they're going to public events and, and courageously uh, talking publicly about things that they've experienced in the community. They're going to listening sessions. They are um, calling into council meetings, emailing us as counselors. There's a number of different ways for people um, to come out and, and report what's going on, and, and they all take um, a lot of courage to do. And uh, I'm a little bit concerned here that there's a, a little bit of a sense of moving the ball. Um, that you know, even though people are, are coming out and speaking publicly about things that maybe they haven't had the courage to do so for years or, or decades, um, that the ball is being moved that because they haven't uh, filed a police report on this incident that you know, maybe that's why we haven't been able to adequately address it. So um, you know, there's one reason why I thought the, uh, the response potentially should have been a little bit more expansive, perhaps uh, the motion should have been formally amended uh, to, to expand it a little bit more. I know there was discussion about expanding it to um, racial and ethnic groups beyond just Asian Americans. So, you know, I don't know if it's possible to, to follow up um, with, a, with a little bit more uh, in, information uh, on that. But, you know, my main concern here is that we recognize that, you know, for, for us to act uh, as a body and, and to make progress in making sure these incidents aren't happening in our community, um, there's a number of different ways that people can stand up and, and let us know what's going on as elected officials. It doesn't have to be through a formal police report. You know, people have been standing up more than I've ever seen um, within the last year. Um, and, you know, in terms of the social justice movement and, and uh, addressing hateful incidents. And, and I encourage people to, t uh, to keep doing that. And there's no one way to do it. You know, keep speaking at public meetings, keep emailing us, keep uh, posting on social media about things that are going on because it all, it all matters. And, and we need to respond uh, to all of it. So, you know, again, I, I don't want this report to um, be reflective of, uh, you know, of what's actually going on in the community. We know. We know what's going on in the, in the community. And, um, and again, I want to commend people who have been standing up and talking about what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Brock. Yeah, I was just making a suggestion we take Councilor Noon's motion now. I mean, there's been a lot of good discussion about this. And it all leads into what Councilor Noon wants to get done. So I make a, a motion to take 10.9 Second. Out of order. Uh, motion to take 10.9 out of order by Councilor Rock, second by Councilor Noon. 10.9, Councilor Noon requests city manager work with appropriate departments to discuss possible options for reporting hate crimes in the city. Seconded by Councilor Rock. Councilor Noon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I thank uh, Chief for the report on Councilor Murcia's motion. Um, I know that before the respond to the motion, and we all agree, we all know this. We all know this. Not just I, that hate crime happened in the city, not just city of Low, not just Massachusetts, in our nation. It's under report. It, there's research after research indicated that hate crime are less reported or underreport than the non-hate crime. So we know that it happened. And the past years or so, especially the last few months, we heard those have been victim of racial remarks and so on, spoke up. And we hear them. So um, that said, and that's why I, I was wondering, what can we do? How can we open ourselves up so that we, so that they can report to us, either through the police department or any other department that the manager office see fit? What process? Is it through anonymous phone call? I don't know how, but I, I leave it to the professional. I leave it to the managers to see uh, what possible option 
can we encourage people to report this? That's all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anybody else on the motion? Uh, Madam Does Manager. Th thank you. No, um, Mr. Mr. Oops, one, sorry, one, one of the councilors. Councilor Samaras. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, in regard to this motion, I, I also, it's a, good, it's a good motion, a necessary motion, but I, I'd also like to think in a, in a little bit of a different direction. I've spoken to many uh, seniors in the Asian community, and basically what they've indicated is the fear of the time. So a natural question to, for me to ask would, have you been victimized? Is it something that you haven't stated? And they said very clearly, that they haven't at this particular point, but they said they fear at some t at some point of possibly being victimized. Fear is study there's more fear studied in into the Asian community than we know. I believe uh, it's it's be it's it's real, but the thing is, I, I don't think we know that or understand the depths of the fear. But I, I would I would like to see uh, more discussion take place on this issue, and I think. It's incumbent upon us, you know, I don't know whether at some point making a motion, but the thing is, I'm uh, working with the city manager to work with some of the nonprofits, okay, and some of the neighborhood groups to have open discussions, especially with the neighborhood groups. Uh, they can bring people together within the neighborhoods and talk, and they have the police that are able to come. We are able to have social workers from the school system or from the city come to some of those meetings to talk to the people in the community about how fear can really destroy a community. And, and we don't want that fear to be in place. Yes, we want the best reporting system that we can have, but I think this issue has to be discussed more. I think we have to offer to, especially members of the Asian community, but I think members of all, all communities, what happens when fear is fear like this takes place. And I think if we uh, use the neighborhood groups or ask them if they could help with some of the discussion, lead in some of the discussion and bring in people from uh, the various areas that can speak on these, on the issue of hate crimes and how to deal with these issues and give the people tools on how to handle such as situations. I think it's, it's bigger than just merely saying, okay, we'll take reports and we'll know what's happening. I think right now, I think we have to have a very proactive uh, approach and say, okay, let's talk about what hate crimes are. Let's talk about how they're truly affecting the Asian community and let's help give them some of the tools uh, besides reporting to deal with these issues. I think, it's, I think it's that important. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you to the council. You know, obviously the, we will work um, together with the, uh, I know the police department in the response to this motion has indicated a number of proactive steps that they will be taking, reaching out to the Asian community and, and essentially denouncing violence, period, of all kinds and, and any type of hate crime um, and, and also encouraging people to report suspicious activity. As to Councilor Noon's motion, we certainly will work and have been examining what are other options besides the traditional way of reporting a crime and those are things that are being looked at uh, not just here but also across the country because of the climate we find ourselves in I, I do point out that the um, when we talk about you know the in in terms of crime uh, there are a number of uh, bills pending in the legislature right now trying to define and update our hate crime law, which can sometimes be vague and makes it difficult to either charge or convict people. And it's, so that's just another aspect to this in, in terms of criminal justice. These bills have been referred to the Judiciary Committee in the legislature. So this is a very important topic that has been, is being looked at from a number of, of angles. And we, we have taken this very seriously. I think the uh, Chief is on if he wanted to say a few words, but you have our uh, promise that this is a priority here in this city. Chief, I don't know if there's anything more to add. Yeah, no, I, I agree with everything that everybody has said, had to say tonight. I mean, that was the, the trouble with the motion is that 
people think that things, think these things don't happen, and I agree that they do, and pe people are just afraid to report it. So the goal is, uh, there was discussions over the last week on how we can reach out to the community. Um, a lot of people don't go to neighborhood meetings. Um, they're still kind of reluctant. We've tried very hard to incorporate even more people into those meetings, uh, having sidewalk meetings, et cetera. But even that, um, there was a discussion today about maybe providing something on our, our website that people could report it on their website, wouldn't have to come to the PD and now uh, we would investigate it that way. But I agree with the manager. Uh, this afternoon after I left her office, I went through some of the cases that they've had in the state. On, it's a very high bar to try to get over that hurdle to prove that that, 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 that was the person's intent. So I'm hoping that uh, that will change with the new law, make things easier. But um, our first step needs to be is making people feel comfortable coming forward and, um, and speaking up and just not talking to neighbors or like that. They have to reach out for us or get an emissary to come see us and, um, and we'll investigate it. Um, you know, we've worked very hard in the city for the last 20 years to build relationships with people in the city and uh, we will continue to do that regardless of the climate. But thank you. Mr. Mayor. Anything else? Sure, Mr. Mr. Conway. Mayor. Yeah, th th thank you. Uh, uh, you know, this is certainly an interesting discussion and, and, uh, and I agree. I'm glad that, that this has been brought forward. And I think what the thread that comes out here is that it goes through these conversations is uh, developing a, a comfort level for individuals to uh, share uh, the negative experience of, of uh, different forms of a hate crime uh, to Asians. And I will tell you that um, I know that my, uh, my daughter and uh, and the son-in-law uh, live in New York, and it's not just something that takes place in Lowell, Massachusetts, but it's all over the country. And I know that my son-in-law has been sitting down with the family with their mother and father because they're uh, they're Asian, and there is a uh, there is a fear that has already has has developed, and uh, you know they're, they're sitting down the, <clears throat> the siblings to try to try to help them out so that if, if there is a problem. Uh, how, how do they deal with it? Who do they contact and so forth? So, you know, this is, uh, this is a territory that I'm glad that we're looking at it very carefully. And as uh, what, the, what the chief just said, I think is extremely important to bring the police in on it. Uh, and, uh, and what was brought up too was to have the, uh, uh, the nonprofits uh, step up and, and to help out too. So again, I think it's something that I'm glad that is put, put on the table. And it's certainly, uh, we need to work on it and, and not just something, uh, you know, for, for right now, but we need to make sure that this is a long range goal that, uh, that you know, this type of hate crime uh, against the Asians or anyone uh, just doesn't, just doesn't continue to happen. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, new election system, Councilor Noon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you um, for the report, Madam Managers. Um, um, I'm happy to know that um, Madam Manager and her team are working uh, very hard to reach out and educate our low residents on the new hybrid system, you know, how to vote and the polling location. So, um, you know, sooner we can get that um, Zoom or, or in person education um, out, uh, the better, uh, because um, really um, there's a lot of question around uh, that in terms of, um, you know, where do I vote and, you know, how, so um, in term, because of the new system. So thank you for the report again. Thank you. Any other questions on that one? Councilor Brooke? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just through to, to Madam Manager, you know, I did speak to to, to Phil, I'm Mr. Draft for this week about this, and uh, I appreciate the work that was done by your office to get this out for this agenda. Um, I know that um, you know, anything that was added to what's going to already been done and, and been put in place in the future will be very, very beneficial. And uh, like Councilor Noon said, the sooner the better. So thank you very much for, for getting it done. Thank you, Councilor Chow. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank um, Elliot Veloso for, for the detailed report. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Madam Manager, um, just a, a quick question. I, I think the report answered most of them, but I've seen some reference in there um, about the uh, registered voters. I know that uh, when 
um, at the election office, they have a, a list of the registered voters uh, citywide. But now that for candidates who are running for the district, is there a way that the election office can, I don't know what the terminology is, but to batch the, vote, the registered voters by district so it can provide to candidates um, to be able to, you know, to, to campaign and what have you. Because if you run citywide, you just get the, the registered voters for the whole city, that's easy. Um, it'll be, I don't have the technology, I'm sure many candidates don't. How would you just get just a list in your district only, if that's possible? That, sure. M Mr. May, uh, I believe um, Mr. Velo Attorney Veloso is on, if he can uh, answer that question. I, I think they can break it down by district, but let me ask um, Attorney Veloso if, if, if the clerk can let him in. He's present. Oh, he's here? Yeah, he's in. Uh, hi. Uh, oh, I uh, thought you meant in person. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, Madam Manager, member of the City Council. Um, in, in regards uh, to the Councilor's question, uh, yes, uh, at this stage, uh, we do have resources available that can uh, determine where a voter uh, lives relative to the district. I am in the process of, of taking a look of how we can update uh, the state's VIRS system to reflect the uh, new districts now that uh, the district boundaries have been finalized for the municipal election. Uh, in the interim, uh, public records uh, and uh, VRIS records uh, can produce uh, voter lists that have uh, the voters' uh, addresses in the uh, listing. And on uh, your little, your vote, the website, we have included a Excel spreadsheet that indicates uh, the street listing of, uh, that has uh, an alphabetical list of the streets, as well as the corresponding districts for which those streets are. Now, there are certain streets in which a district line sort of goes in between the street. For those uh, voters, we also have included a, a electronic map on low, your, uh, low, your low, your votes, in which you can put in your address in a electronic uh, entry thing and you can look up your address in relation to the districts as they appear on the electronic map so in the event you look up your address your street address on the street listing and it indicates that there are uh, several districts upon which uh, that voter lives you can further refine your search by going onto uh, the electronic map and look up the specific address and that can pull up your location in the district uh, we are working to uh, refine this list and provide uh, uh, more detailed street listings. But at this stage, uh, there are resources available in which a individual voter can look up uh, where they live and what district they will be in for purposes of the municipal elections. Madam Manager. So thank you, um, Attorney Veloso. So we'll, we'll continue to work on that so the candidates, um, we, if we can, to the best ability possible. We can give them those voter lists um, and, and try and uh, kind of geofence it around districts. So we'll, we'll get back to the council and uh, to let you know how feasible that is. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, any other questions? Uh, next one, marijuana hiring update, Councilor Noon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wanna thank um, Director uh, Slagle um, for the report I know that this report is only for the Patriot Care, but it's still good. It's good to know that Patriot Care strive, you know, to high preference uh, to the qualified resident of low. Uh, if you looked at the, the report, it's indicated that 40% of the dispensary st staff are resident of low, which is a good, you know, effort by Patriot Care, and then 25% is of cultivation and man manufactured staff. Uh, a high in a, in a Patriot Care doing it. I hope that other uh, establishment um, uh, will follow the example of Patriot Care. And thank you for the report again. Thank you. Councilor Elliott. Um, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you to the city manager, I know we had a cannabis uh, control, cannabis commission 
Subcommittee meeting, Madam Manager. Um, at that meeting and even a subsequent report, we learned that there were 10 cultivation <clears throat> uh, companies in the city. The city's not placed, or the council's not voted to put a limit on that. Um, do you expect for that to increase and um, were you in discussions with any others? Because I, I understand that we didn't place a limit like we did on, pardon me, retail. But I do think at some point, you know, we've got to hit a, a, you know, a limit or a saturation point. And I think we're at 10, um, just like we placed a limit on the delivery companies. So I just want to get you, excuse me, get your thoughts on that. Yeah, Madam Mayor. yeah thank you. Um, so there are 10 host community agreements, but not operational companies. Um, they haven't gone through their all the process. Okay. Um, you know whether it's through the planning board, through the cannabis control commission. There's there's a a long uh, process for people to uh, get their approval. So we haven't seen that. We haven't seen a lot coming to um, fruition. But what we did um, prioritize is that these businesses and some of them are small. Um, would be located in in underutilized buildings, in some blighted buildings, things that to try and improve and, and do job creation. So, um, I think right now, you know, we, you know, there isn't a huge number that are coming forward, but I think we do need to wait and see how many of these companies actually make it through this pretty difficult process as far as getting approved. But so how many cultivations are in operation right now? We know there's only. I think there's two. One is um, two. Eric is on, er, Mr. Slagle is on. Uh, you know, the, the Patriot Care has one, and there's one on Bolt Street. Um, okay, so there's 10 host community agreements you don't anticipate. Yeah, um, but we haven't seen, you know, them open yet. Got it. So, okay. But we're monitoring, you know, those those agreements, so we, we can report to the subcommittee, you know, as, as we see those um, coming forward. Okay. Good. And then come forward with some recommendations. But... But so far, the the locations have been such that they're not in neighborhoods. They're not. They're in buildings that are underutilized and and uh, provide some some good jobs for for some people. No, it's good to get to, to be kept abreast. I appreciate that. And you just mentioned they're not in the neighborhoods. We're trying to put them in locations that are underutilized. There's jobs, and of course, there is revenue. But I. But we'll uh, we'll we'll glad you bring a, a report on. back to the Canvas Control. Committee, subcommittee. Thank you. Uh, Attorney General Banded Property Pilot Program. Councilor Noon. Any questions on? Um, all right. Um, Councilor Drinkwater. Any questions I, on that? Sure. I, I know Councilor Elliott was on uh, this one as well, but uh, I mean, I, I think it was. An excellent report. Um, there's a lot of great information about this uh, pilot program that occurred uh, in the Centerville neighborhood in conjunction with the Attorney General's office. Uh, my one main uh, question after seeing the, the results uh, of the program is whether it's something that can be replicated uh, in other neighborhoods. I, I don't know if, uh, if Mrs. Slagle is available just to, to speak. Yeah, Mr. Slagle, I believe, is on. Uh, I am. Th thank you. Um, sure. Mr. Mayor, through you to the council. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's actually a very good question. We've been in contact with the uh, AG's office uh, a little bit over the pandemic, uh, um, uh, and, and they reached out uh, in, the, uh, in the fall uh, to give us some information about, about wrapping it up. Um, it's certainly something I think that we should uh, do either in conjunction with the AG's office or uh, on our own um, uh, and working with the law department, uh, and, and I think we're going to have to make an assessment as to whether or not we have the resources to do that in-house, or whether we should try to continue our uh, our relationship with the AG's office. Um, as you saw from the from the results, I think it was a, a successful program, and the the vast majority of those of those houses are now in much better shape than they were when they uh, showed up on that list. So um, we will be, uh, as we come out of the pandemic, I think that um, uh, we will be, uh, uh, I'll, I'll schedule a meeting with the, the city solicitor to talk about um, uh, what the best uh, use of our city resources is and how we can um, duplicate the thing that we did at Centerville in, in a, a, another neighborhood of the city. 
Thank you. You're all set. Councilor um, Elliott. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, thank you, Madam Manager, for the report. I did file this motion with Council Drinkwater in response to a neighborhood meeting that we participated in uh, the Centerville Neighborhood Action Group, and uh, this is where the request came from. So credit goes, uh, first and foremost, um, the Attorney General's office did come to the City Council meeting at the urging and with the support of Representative Tom Golden. Tom Golden. Um, 14 properties are on this list, and I think it was a I think it was a terrific success, quite frankly. And I think that the Attorney General's office used their resources, their leverages that uh, that was mentioned that we don't that we don't have in the city to really improve a large block of properties that were abandoned. They were an eyesore to the neighborhood. They were ignored, and uh, in I, I think a short amount of time. These 14 properties either have been um, uh, adjudicated through the Attorney General's office or in large part um, through housing. Some of them went to housing court, um, so there would be a receiver. And the city has been successful. We have done this um, also where um, you know the city takes over and makes the improvement. So, I, and again, I think Mr. Slego mentioned, do we have the resources not like the state? So. I would like to see um, other sections of the city where we could perhaps partner with uh, the Attorney General's office because it really is, you know, property owner receives a letter from, from the Attorney General. Um, I think that they're gonna move and improve, sell, repair, pull a permit, which is, which is what the case is here. So um, we'll forward this report on Madam Manager to the, the neighborhood. Um, I think, again, this was a, a very successful initiative um, somehow somewhere we certainly know there are other properties in the city that are not owner occupied they're they're owned by people out of town or otherwise that um, they just don't take care of their property and this this program uh, turned quite a few of them down and improved the um, you know the character of many many of the streets that these are located on Hildreth third Lily um, Lakeview Ave, uh, Coburn, um, just just can't say enough about the improvements that have been made uh, thanks to this initiative. So thank you for the report. And I don't know what the next step is, Madam Manager. Maybe we have to get together with the, dele uh, the you know the de delegation uh, representative Gold <clears throat> Golden Mom and and Howard to and Senator Kennedy to you know let's see if we can get them on board again. I don't know. I don't know how if I don't think you need that in the form of a motion, but. I look to your, you know, your your suggestions on how we can sort of um, implement something like this again. Sure, Madam Mayor. Th thank you. We, we we will certainly follow up with the Attorney General's office and the delegation. I I agree. I think it's the um, the presence of the Attorney General and the the strength behind uh, their uh, involvement that um, has a lot to do with the success uh, that we see here. So. Would certainly ask to look at other areas and other areas of the city that need the same type of attention. Right. So, lastly, just a great deal of thanks. <clears throat> thanks to Representative Golden uh, for initiating this and bringing this forward. And um, I hope his staff or representative is looking. Well, we're going to come and ask you to do it again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Council Mercia. Um, this is a good report. It was a good motion when we saw 14 pieces of property that were in deplorable condition and after this time went by and got another report, uh, let's say Third Street, the receiver is currently performing work at the property. Coburn Street was sold and renovated by the new owner. Uh, another property on Coburn Street, renovation work on this property was done by the existing owner. Uh, Third Street, sold and the renovation work was done by the new owner. Lakeview Avenue demolished uh, Carolyn Street uh, renovation work done on this property by existing owner. It goes on and on. Uh, Lily Avenue, the owner fixed the code items at this property and brought it up to the uh, character to make the neighborhood worth it. And so this is a good report and you can see the outcome and I hope that we continue this in other sections of the city and other properties. I could give you like five already that I'd like you to work on with the Attorney General, but 
This is a very good report. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, last one, safety along Branch Street uh, Corridor. Councilor Noon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a number of people filed this, a number of council filed this motion in the past. Councilor, Mus, uh, Councilor um, Elliott filed this too, and I think Councilors uh, Chowd at some point. Um, you know, the report indicated that uh, they are challenging with pedestrian safety in this area, ADA accessibility, and even crosswalk, damaged sidewalk, insufficient signage um, at, you know, and, and most importantly, it's a high crash recorded in Pacific Point throughout this entire corridor. Um, I know that there's plan in place now um, sometime, uh, at some point, you know, sometime during the summer of this year, there'll be some sort of uh, uh, design uh, and, and, and gather feedback from the community. And also there's also plans to um, looking for funding source um, to do this. Um, but at the meantime, I, I think there's something need, something, if there's anything we can do at the meantime to address some of this um, concern that brought up uh, before the actual, you know, um, uh, uh, construction or, or reconfigure, reconfiguration of this area start. So, uh, Madam Manager. Sure, Madam Manager. Thank, thank you, um, to you. Thank you, Councilor Noon. Uh, our, our, I am going to call him our new chief design planner. I know he has spoken at subcommittee, but I'll just take this opportunity to introduce him here at the city council meeting, Camilo Espatia, um, and, and ask him to address some, as, the, as Councilor Noon has pointed out, there are short-term things that we want to do as well as long-term and let that area know how this is important. If Camillo is on, if he could uh, speak to some of these um, issues in, in the Branch Street area and the plans, both near-term and, and long-term working with the, the area. Sure, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, yes, we are definitely looking into this. Um, I think we're basically acting upon our uh, previous traffic engineer recommendations. We have paid uh, site visits. We started actually measuring our roads. Uh, we started walking the area, uh, running inventories. Uh, we already started identifying points uh, where action is needed beyond the intersection of uh, Middlesex and Branch. We started looking at parking, uh, crosswalks, the, uh, the way people drive and, and the, the way uh, drive lanes are, are, being, are being identified right now uh, through pavement markings or the, the lack thereof. Um, the conditions of sidewalk, we started looking at crash data through our um, assistant transportation engineer, and we're also um, starting to uh, try to coordinate a road uh, safety audit through MCOC. And we already started um, executing some design recommendations, some preliminary drawings uh, to understand uh, distances and areas and uh, work extent uh, and to coordinate process with our engineering department. Again, for the long-term vision, what the implications will be for things like gas lines or water and sewage. So that process is in study, but it helps us also uh, maybe assess some of the short-term approach uh, interventions that we would have here. And then for that, we do have a plan, which is basically through uh, pavement markings, uh, maybe repainting or painting new crosswalks either um, at that intersection of, uh, or um, middle, mid street inter intersection, the one that's in front of the, uh, or adjacent to the police station and through signage. And those we could actually start implementing earlier this year. Um, so these drawings or this, I don't know, I don't know if you had a chance to look at the, the actual response as a little sketch. That sketch is being uh, translated into actual CAD files so that we can understand more the areas. Uh, the amount of paint that, that we would need, linear footage or uh, areas for, for um, interventions such as uh, flexible uh, posts and signage. So we are looking into this to understand what the cost implications will be for that. So short term, I think we could start something this year immediately at that intersection uh, with the idea of having that long term plan to start implementing something next, uh, next spring. 
Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Elliot. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for the report. Um, yeah, good information, Council News, right? It was a couple of years ago that I had filed a similar motion to get some improvements, streetscape, certainly safety issues. So this is a good step, um, Madam Manager. We know that it is um, between 200 and 700,000 to implement a lot of these things, but it's, <clears throat> as we all know, it's a very, very busy corridor, um, both from a commercial perspective and um, pedestrian walking through there. So um, I think these improvements will dovetail nice with the Lord Overpass or the, the Lord Thoroughway um, movie because it's not an underpass. So I, I think this is good timing. Um, and thank you to the design planner, uh, Camilo. Um, that was, um, I think this is good news. Even, like you say, short term pavement markings, crosswalks, because the place is, um, it's, it's, it's run down. I mean, um, I do know that there's a report coming up, um, and I don't know if maybe Camilo can reach out to the um, is it urbancanopy.org because there's a greening of um, greening of the gateway and there's 500 trees. I think at the very least there's a great opportunity to put trees um, that won't you know that won't cost a lot to be donated by by DCR. So um, I think this is uh, this is welcome news. We'll see some improvements in that in that business corridor and uh, that, that that's very busy and provide a lot of safety. So thank, <clears throat> thank you, Manage, Madam Manager and um, Mr. Mayor and, uh, and Camillo. That was the uh, second time we've had a chance to meet and they've been great presentations to both times. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Informational reports, Madam Manager? Thank you. Uh, we have an informational report from uh, Yovani uh, Baez Rose um, regarding the uh, Greening the Gateway Cities grant from the Commonwealth uh, and uh, the goal in terms of having 100 trees planted this spring. Um, and and Yovani has been working with DCR about the, the trees, the planting and where. Uh, and then next season, 400 trees. And, and again, as Councillor Elliot mentioned 2,400 trees over three years. That's a, a huge amount to come into the city. Um, and there's a map that's attached that shows the area of the city where these trees will be um, planted. Uh, and, and we will be seeing some of those trees. I know there's a, a motion later on, um, I think by Councillor Chow. Uh, and Yovani can speak to that, I think. They've already been working in some of those areas, especially with DCR to plant trees this season. So, yes. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for um, having me tonight. Um, I did just want to, so the Greening the Gateways program is an incredible program. We're really lucky that it's uh, here in Lowell. Um, there were previous city council motions uh, regarding this program uh, in past years and they had not expanded to the city of Lowell. So we were really fortunate um, that in this recent expansion, they included uh, the city. So it's a, it's a program through DCR. It is only focused in gateway cities and their goal really is about improving the tree canopy. So they focus their planting zone and why we have the, the planting zone that, that we currently have. Um, it's really about density in tree plantings and trying to make sure that um, we get adequate tree coverage. Um, trees are free for people. Uh, so we really wanna encourage homeowners, property owners, developers, uh, renters, if you can get the homeowner's permission um, private nonprofit organizations like uh, the Coalition for Better Acre or um, the Lowell Housing Authority. Um, anybody who owns property within the zone is eligible for a tree. DCR will come out to your property and assess. They have a catalog of many trees, up to 50 different kinds of trees. Um, and they'll try to find something that'll fit for you and your property. So we're really excited to have them here in Lowell. They have, I think, about 20 locations already identified um, on city property, including four uh, trees to be um, planted at Armory Park. Um, and so we're really excited to have them. We're working closely with the Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust on this project. They're helping us with the community outreach. 
uh, we're providing uh, informational to people in one pagers and translating a lot of documentation. So, so we're, we're excited. Uh, the goal for this season is 100 trees. Uh, typically the goal is to have 400 trees in each season. They have two seasons, a spring planting and a fall planting due to COVID um, and their uh, limited crew right now. The goal for this first planting season is only 100 trees. We're going to um, hopefully in post COVID time be able to expand that and DCR does work very hard to hire locally. So we're hoping that when COVID um, distancing protocols are no longer required, we'll be able to hire um, a local planting crew uh, from, from the city in order to get out in the neighborhood and do the planting work. Thank you, Giovanni. Um, thank you, uh, thank you, Ivani. That was um, that was a good report. And the most important part of that is the trees are free, um, and the state wants to. And I'll disclose, I, I work at DCR. I just want to make and there's there's no conflict of interest. But the trees are free, and they are for private property. Not, in fact, um, we really encourage private property owners to take advantage and put it on, on your site. The only thing you have to do is water it because it's um, they really need to be watered. So uh, I'm excited about this because there is no cost and it's everybody is um, eligible within that certain zo zone. And I'm pleased to hear there's already um, trees being planted on, on public spaces as well. So um, uh, this is good and um, again, free just I don't know who who can people contact uh, Yovani um, yeah, Yovani is uh, heading up the program for right. the greening of the the gateway program so um, okay through and, DPD. Uh, it's good to hear you're doing outreach because people won't know a lot of people don't watch this but I think it's, they could call my office and we'll make sure we put them in touch okay so thank you for the for the report and the update and it's really good news thank you Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, as Madam Manager mentioned earlier, I have one of the motions to address the tree planting uh, in motion 1017, uh, tree planting at the Amara Park. Uh, permission to bring this motion up right now since we're on this topic right now. Which one is that? Okay. Uh, motion to take 1017 out of order by Councilor Rook, seconded by Councilor Chow. 1017, Councilor Chow requests city manager join with Lowell Parks and Recreation and Mass Department of Conservation to enhance the green landscape at Armory Park in the Lower Highlands with tree plantings this, second, this summer, seconded by Councilor Drinkwater. Councilor Chow. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you so much, Giovanni, for, for that report. I just love the title, uh, Greening the, the Gateway Cities. Um, that, that's very important, and I think the locations that uh, you have identified, the uh, Lower Highlands and the Acre, these are two areas in the city that are very, very dense um, in, in populations and uh, small streets and a lot of buildings. So by having these trees planted in these two areas is going to really beautify uh, the neighborhoods and, and the city. And uh, thank you, Madam Manager, for already working on, on the, the tree planting at Armory Park. I um, thought about that the first uh, thing when I saw uh, that these trees can be planted at private uh, spaces and public spaces because Armory Park uh, in that area, as you know, um, not many trees, a lot of uh, families that live in uh, densely populated area. Um, no green space, so I think that's very important to have that. Um, so now that it's that, that's just addressed, um, so just uh, one more request, if maybe look at the calorie park also. I don't know if that would be, uh, or that is in the zone, but I know that that park there is used by a lot of people, and probably any park could, could use more trees, but uh, those are two parks that I have in mind, and it, it's a good thing that we have uh, uh, our very own counselor here that is working at DCR, um, Councilor Elliott, I'm pretty sure that you know these trees can be uh, used widely, and if we need more trees, probably you can do more to get more trees into the city. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Any other comments on the Councilor Noon? Mr. Mayor, can I take uh, 
10.8 out of order? Uh, sure, we're still on the suspension. We have some speaker. Second the motion to suspend right. to take 10.8 out of the, the order. 10.8, 10 you said? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, 10.8, Councilor Noon requests city manager explore utilizing a portion of the city's $60 million stimulus money towards installing lights at Clemente Ball Field at the Bartlett Middle School. Seconded by Councilor Elliott. Councilor Noon. Mr. Mayor, I'll let the speaker speak. Sure, we have registered speaker, Mr. Clark. Common law. Common Lara. C Cecilia Gutierrez. Hello. Go ahead. Hi, you're all set. You have five minutes. Just state your name and, and address for the record. Thank you. Yeah. Carmen Lara. No sé qué pasó con Carmen. Hoy está hablando. Who did you call? Go ahead, Cecilia. I, I think. Ms. Gutierrez is going to interpret for Maria Claudio. Is that correct? That is correct, right, yes. So, okay. uh, my Maria name is. Claudio, yeah. You, sure, you want ahead. to. Uh, so, my name is Cecilia Gutierrez Shapur. I live in 11 Randolph Circle in Westford, Massachusetts, and I work at CVA. So, Mr. Mayor, does Maria Claudio want to speak and then. Um, I think the, the interpreter can interpret for her. Yeah, she's got it on mute, Maria. She's got it on mute. Maria, Maria, you have te que presentar yeah. y decir tu dirección. Okay, hola. Mi nombre es Maria Claudio. Soy presidenta de la Liga Roberto Clemente Lío Flobo. Sí, tu dirección. Aquí. Okay, 192 de la Sofor Street, apartamento 1. So her name is Maria Claudia. She's the president of the Roberto Clemente League. Her address is 192 Sofor Street here in Lowell. Okay. Speaking. Could, could you have, interpreter, could you have Maria turn off her television? Maria, puedes apagar la televisión, por favor? Okay, un momento. Okay. Okay, please continue. Okay, okay. that's it. Okay. Ahí está Carmen Lara, también está ahí. Carmen Lara, tienes que aprender tu micrófono. Carmen Lara está ahí, en la, pero no. ¿Podemos hablar ahora? Ah. Are you ready for to hear Maria Claudio? Uh, yeah, if she, her, yeah. If she doesn't can. have a lot to say, do you want her to speak and then you can you can interpret it? She can just finish, or is it too much? I think we can do that. Uh, okay, Maria, this, Maria, puedes decir lo que quieras decir y yo al final te traduzco. Okay. Um, muy buenas noches. Um, Nosotros en varias ocasiones hemos reunido con el City Council referente a la problemática que nosotros tenemos en nuestro film, Roberto Clemente. Uh, ellos conocen que nosotros necesitamos luces para el parque, la Concession Stand, 
a un storage para poder guardar nuestro equipment, la cual el que tenemos es demasiado de pequeño, no nos caben las cosas ahí. Y también los baños, que es lo más importante, porque nosotros recibimos personas de otros lugares y ¿sabes? para nosotros queremos que, 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 que nuestros niños se sientan bien y que todo esté en buenas condiciones. Y esperamos a ver en qué proceso está todo lo que nosotros hemos pedido anteriormente. So she said, uh, good evening. Uh, her name again is Maria Claudio. And the main reason she's coming back again, even though she mentioned that before, is because they have some problems in the field that she would appreciate if they are uh, addressed. One of them is the lighting. The kids cannot play in the evening because they don't have light there. They will also like some uh, Stanford concessions that they can have over there as well. Uh, a storage for the equipment. And the main one she's very concerned is about the bathrooms. Uh, the bathrooms are not usable right now. And she, want to, she wants to provide a great place, not only for the teams that come to visit and play uh, against uh, the Roberto Clemente League, but also for the kids that enjoy playing there. Okay, is that all set then? Yeah, Maria, tienes algo más para decir? Um, bueno, más o menos eso es lo que nosotros siempre hemos estado discutiendo con el City Council. Lo más prioridad para nosotros es por lo menos los baños, que es lo más importante porque siempre hemos recibido personas de otros lugares, como ya les comenté, y es lo más importante porque el baño que tenemos ahora está, no está en buenas condiciones y queremos que nuestros niños se sientan bien y que por lo menos tengamos un parque representativo de nosotros, de la comunidad hispana en buenas condiciones y que se sientan bien los niños al igual que los jóvenes que es lo cual nosotros rescatamos de las calles ya yeah. ya yeah. okay Inter Who's Cecilia. Cecilia so basically she's saying that uh, what, what she said yeah can you hear me Yes, we can. Go ahead. Yeah. So basically, she said that um, those are the things. So basically, basically, she's saying that what she said before is exactly what she needs, but especially the bathrooms. And um, she wants to provide a really nice place for the kids so the kids are in the field playing and out of trouble. Okay, thank you. Are you all set? I think so. Carmen Lara. Carmen Lara. Habla Carmen. Carmen Lara. Prende el micrófono, Carmen. Carmen Lara. Ah, tiene el micrófono apagado, Carmen Lara. Okay, yeah, you can speak. Carmen, right. conéctate al audio. Okay, habla. Yo no entiendo, voy a no se oye nada. If you're having trouble, you need to just shut your TV off and then um, please speak. Okay. I don't know if you I don't know if you're muted or not. We can't hear you. She's on the Zoom up here, but she's not I don't know what's happening. She's on the Zoom. I know. 
Te vas a ser una pagada. El, el audio apagado. Solo. There are other people that are listed to speak, but I don't see them. That they're not connected. But uh, Carmen is collected, connected. She's just having an issue on her, and I, I, I assume. Why don't we, Why don't we just the, refer this to the PAC right. subcommittee yeah. and okay. invite these people to right. speak there and... Yeah. Second. Refer this motion to the PAC subcommittee by Council of Mercy, a second by Council of Elliott. <laughs> Madam Manager. Let me just say just quickly, the, the uh, monies that are being referred to, the uh, stimulus monies um, that are part of the American Recovery um, <clears throat> Plan Act, uh, we don't have the monies yet. We also don't have the regulations from the federal government as to what they can be used for. We're certainly waiting for those, and we will certainly look at. Uh, but at this point in time, uh, that you know, we, we we need a lot more information from the federal government, so we don't have that guidance yet. So, so we're referring this motion to the PAC subcommittee so that these people that can't get through today are going to speak Could on speak it speak in favor it's just i just want to make it clear right. that we don't we we don't yet know what that money can so be so they're going to come for. out of their way for nothing just to be told that I mean, they're not getting any we'll, help we'll find out probably in what we're told maybe within 30 to 60 days those regulations may be coming forward i just want the 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 listeners to understand that the city doesn't have the money the city will get the money in two tranches one half this year one half next year but it's very specific what it can be used for, and we don't know what that is yet. Right. We have a rough idea, but um, well, broadband from, and water and sewer. From my past experience being on the park subcommittee, different groups would come before us because they'd want either a concession stand, lights, uh, whatever they needed, and they had fundraisers, and they raised the money yeah. themselves. And I'm not saying that these people can afford to do that, but... That's exactly what happened in Highland Field and uh, over on uh, Edward Street Soccer Field and the concession yeah. stands, the bathrooms, was all funded through donations. Am I right? Yeah, so I, 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 again, I, I just want to make it clear that it may be premature to take it up where we don't know, specifically where they're looking to use some of this or want. The uh, I would draw my to. second then. I, yeah, I think we I, need to get the sure. the guidance from the federal I hate government. To mislead them and give yeah, them I don't want them to something. think that we have fifty million dollars. Yeah, because we we don't have it yet, and we also don't know what it can be used on yet. But okay. as soon as we do, we'll come forward to the sure. That'll be fine. Thank know. you, Madam Manager. Councilor Newton, you're all set then. Or thank no, thank sure. thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I put this on because a couple of years ago I uh, put it on, and it's the issue of costs. Um, you know, where are we going to get that money? I know, um, I understand what uh, Madam Manager said, um, that uh, we, those money that come from the federal government in the form of stimulus, uh, there are certain things we can use it for and, or certain things we cannot, and this may not be one of them, but if there's a, if there's a other pocket of money that, you know, we can help at least with the light, um, because, look, I remember uh, Roberto Clemente Park, you know, um, on Middlesex Street. It took uh, eight years, maybe uh, ten years, to get it, you know, to get the light there. And this is uh, not one baseball team, multiple team, and young people that need place to go, uh, then hang out on the street. Um, it's poor condition uh, that uh, Roberto Clemente baseball field. Um, I understand raise, uh, do fundraising and all that. I don't think that Maria, Marie Claudia, uh, uh, you know, it's, and some of the parents can do that, and they're going to need our help just like any other park in the city that we looked into and we take care of. And this is one that, you know, uh, does not have light. Uh, lighting is important for those kids to play, and even with conditions that poor, 
or even with no con concession stand, or even with no uh, a bench, or even no, with no bathroom, you know, having lighting as a start, and if, whatever we can do to help. Um, this is a kid in the, the acre area, and this is park, uh, baseball field is being utilized, uh, you know, um, especially now summer coming. Anything we can do to help. I feel, I feel, I feel for them. I know all of you do too, because uh, I, I can relate it to the Roberto Clemente Park. Um, you know, when there's no light and all of a sudden there's light, uh, you should see the, the face of the, some of those people when they see light there and they're just happy. That's their hangout now. So I know that um, my former, my, my colleague to my left just told me that this is a place that he played in baseball when he was young. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments on the motion? Yeah, I would just uh, concur, Council Noon. You know, the area uh, can be really beneficial to the neighborhood uh, as a AYO, uh, you know, former player. That it, it really is a place where kids congregate. Um, you know, softball field, baseball field, skate park, basketball courts. So, I think it would be very beneficial if if that can be done. I understand the uh, the restrictions that may come with with the money that we are getting. Um, but you know, I, I also know, you know, Council Child was a Bartlett school kid too, growing up. So I'm sure he utilized the area as well. And it really does. It is a place where everybody from the neighborhood does go and hang out, uh, and uh, it could really be, a, I think, a benefit to to the area to do so. So thank you. Thank you, Council Child. Th thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wasn't going to say anything because um, a lot of good things have been said already by the make of the motion, the, the Rutgers speaker and Councilor Rook, but. Councilor Rook did remind me of my history uh, having gone to the Bard School, uh, having lived in Acre, and we utilized uh, the park in the back of the school a lot when we, uh, when we were young. Um, it's within walking distance to <coughs> all the kids that go to that school and in that area. So I just want, I know that we don't have guidance yet, but I know that Madam Manager and her administration uh, in, the, in the past have been very creative. Um, if anything that um, the residents have requested. So um, I'm, I'm ho hopeful that something can be done. Um, it's, it's a great, um, uh, we'll set a, a great um, history to have lights at that baseball field for the current kids and for the future generation of kids uh, to use. It's very historical. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor of the Council of Samaras? Thank you. No, I just want to read it, reiterate what's already been said. But when you talk about Maria Claudio and a lot of the people that have been working to uh, make that field really uh, doable, I think we owe it to them to do the best that we can. And by giving them the lights and, and other, other areas and taking care of the bathrooms and things like that, I just know they are, they've got such a work ethic in bringing together uh, programs for children and I can see this being very effectively used. And I think that's the way we have to think about it. It's not only uh, the right thing to do, but you have a group of people that have worked very hard over the years to bring together opportunities for a lot of children to uh, be able to play ball, uh, to learn sports, and to come together as a team and bring families together. So it, it's, I've seen enough of it, and, and I remember them coming in my office when I was mayor and they talked about their plans for the future and their plans of bringing other teams from uh, other states, literally other countries, uh, to playing in Lowell uh, with us, with, with our children. So uh, it's not, they're not thinking, we'll say small, it's, they're thinking big. And I, I, I think uh, this is an area of the city that needs to be uh, helped and be assisted. And it's something that will, uh, be good for the students that also go to the Bartlett School. Uh, so uh, I think uh, I think it's something that just has to be dealt with. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Madam Manager, back to the informational report. Yeah, thank you. Um, the next two items, H and I, on the 2022 uh, budget update and school spending compliance, as well as the uh, 20 audit, uh, uh, turn it over to CFO Connor Baldwin. 
Thank you very much, Madam Manager. On, on the first item for the FY 2022 budget update, there are two components to this informational report. The first of which is an update to the council on the 2020 net school spending compliance. Uh, we're pleased to report that according to the uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education for FY 2020, the city of Lowell exceeded the net school spending compliance requirement by $7.3 million. This is demonstrative of the city council's commitment to education and, and it's substantial as compared to other gateway communities. The second component is an update to the city council on the ongoing preparations for the FY 2022 budget. Uh, we've met with all of the departments. Uh, we've been able to close a $12.9 million initial funding gap, and we will bring a, a balanced budget to the city council on May 25th, uh, potentially to be referred to a public hearing or a series of public hearings beginning on June 8th. Uh, the informational report runs over some of the highlights and the challenges that we, we faced bringing us up to this point. Uh, but considering the amount of funding uh, included in the governor's budget for the school system, we will continue that uh, commitment to education and we look forward to the budget hearings uh, in May and June. The second item yeah. on the report, I'm sorry. Oh. Who's, I can't see anybody. Mr. So Mr. Mayor. Councilor Samaras. No, I, I just, uh, Connor Baldwin, I just want to say as a, former educator, how important uh, Connor's statements uh, have been at this point. To think that we've met net school spending at 7.4 million. When you looked in that report, you also saw places like Springfield uh, with a $14.8 million shortfall or New Bedford, an $8 million shortfall. So I want to thank Connor, the city manager for their work to ensuring that we're meeting net school spending. I, I, I don't think people realize how important that is. If, if we talk about wanting a good school system. We talk about wanting to support our children, and that's proof positive that we're, we're doing the right thing and we're in the right place. Of course, this pandemic has created many, many problems that we have to deal with, but we also, uh, you know, Mr. Baldwin's report talks about a lot of funds, uh, are the necessary funds coming into this system to ensure that we can give our children a quality education. So I'm very, very pleased, but I'm just pleased that the city managers kept her promise and her staff with, uh, along has worked hard to ensure that we've met net school spending. It, it, you can't say any more than that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Baldwin, is there anything else? Next one, are we all set? Yep. Uh, Councilor Elliott. Just briefly, Mr. Mayor, um, again, good news, um, Madam Manager and Mr. Baldwin. Um, approaching the, the third quarter and you've closed a significant gap um, using what I would say creative measures and fiscal prudency, um, holding managers uh, and department heads, letting them let them manage and, and live within our means. Uh, Countess Maris mentioned the net school spending figure where we exceed it. We exceed it like on any, any, any other gateway communities. And I, I think it's a testament to the administration, to the city council, uh, especially in light of the charter school spending that really place and it, it places great strain on our budget when it's only funded 25%. I just, I want the people at home, the taxpayers, the residents to know <clears throat> that we just advocate it's public school spending reimbursed similar to chapter 70. And unfortunately it, um, it doesn't to the tune of a $4 million def deficit. So uh, even in light with the, uh, the increases to the pension system from PARAC um, and, and Connor mentioned so many others and it's something we have to address to, uh, the debt service is, uh, but what concerns me is the increase in the trash and recycling of a million dollars. And we have a, an enterprise fund for that. However, it's not self-sustaining. And I want folks at home to know that because of the fines, recycling fines and other, other things, it's a million dollar deficit that's coming out of taxpayers. And I know taxpayers and rate payers are somewhat the same, but in this instance, it's not. So I would like to forward that particular item 
um, Mr. Mayor, if there's no, I, I know it's been voted to the Finance Subcommittee uh, in the past, but the trash um, penalties, the recycling penalties, it's really placing great strain on this burden. I think we need to have, have a meeting and have a, a, a discussion about how we can solve that. I know we've done great outreach. It might be good to get a report on where we are with, um, with the fines anyway of people putting you know, illegal dumping, essentially. So I'll make that in the form of a motion, Mr. Man Mr. Mayor. Motion by Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Drinkwater. You got that. Thank you. Um, Council Rock. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I asked uh, through to uh, to CFO uh, Connor Baldwin, does this uh, that school spending the over and above that the city has done? Does that include any of the uh, COVID uh, COVID things that the city has done? It's like purifies and getting into the schools uh, and, and doing all the the work that uh, the DPW has done. Thank you, Councillor. That's a good question. Uh, there is a component of DPW's effort that is calculated, but the air purifiers and, and a significant amount of the COVID-related work that DPW has done does not count towards the net school spending total, so that would be over and above. Great. Yeah, I just wanted people to know that as well. Thank you. Okay. Any, anything else that you all said? Or? Okay. Next one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, the next item on the agenda is uh, a copy of the FY 2020 basic financial statements and the management letter. Uh, so in lieu of the auditor being here, uh, I'll present to you some of the, uh, the highlights. The FY 2020 audit was presented with a clean opinion and the results were as expected. Uh, the revenues came in higher by two and a half million dollars. And, and because of the spending controls that the city manager had in place in FY 2020, expenditures came in under by $8 million. Uh, there are responses included in the packet to all of the comments. Um, all of the comments included by Powers and Sullivan, our outside management firm, and the finance team will, will work to uh, will work on all of those comments this fiscal year in, um, to resolve them. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further on this? All set, Madam Manager. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, can I just, uh, yeah. just a quick quick question to the clerk? Are there any more registered speakers, public speakers, for any of our motions uh, remaining? There is a registered speaker, Council, for uh, motion 10.19 and the mayor's motion. I, I know we have still a good part of our agenda left. I don't know if you want to take that out of order, just so the, the speaker can have his or her thoughts um, made. I'll make that in a form of motion, please. Council by motion by Council of Rook, second by Council of Drinkwater, take 10 20 out of order. And no, 19. 10 19, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, so, motion by myself, request city manager implement a keep low clean campaign to beautify the city, seconded by Councilor Elliott. Um, motion speaks for itself, but I'll let uh, this registered speaker go. Um, yeah, Brad will take. Hey, Brad. You go. hey, Brad. Good Just evening. state your name and address for the record, and you got five minutes. Sure. My name is Brad Butenhuis, 53 North Billerica Road. I'm the Conservation Commission Vice Chair, and I'd like to speak in, speak in support of this motion. Uh, I've prepared a brief presentation for the council. If it would be all right if I shared my screen. Sure. All right. First off, thank you all for your, your uh, citation presented to the Lowell Litter Crew at last Saturday's event in Centerville. We are honored to serve our city and truly appreciate the recognition from the council. The, the Lowell Litter Crew supports direct action volunteer opportunities and fosters community engagement by providing the tools to make the work worth doing. We shouldn't have to pick up trash, but we are, so we can do some real good with a clean palette. Lowell Litter Crew's first event was exactly one month ago. Since then, we have had 125 volunteers donate 562 hours of their time to clean this city. We have removed 15,150 pounds of trash from our city streets at 12 sites. 
At First Street last Saturday, we had 75 volunteers remove over 4.5 tons of trash from over five acres between First Street and VFW Highway. This was by far our biggest event yet. Our member base is growing as quickly as the bittersweet, which is plaguing so many trees throughout this city. Lowell Litter Crew's goals for 2021 are to develop a, high, a citywide stewardship program, highlight a feasible invasive species removal plan, advocate for methods to protect our city from illegal dumping, connect with local schools to encourage youth volunteerism, form a trained group of volunteers to provide cleanup services at hazardous sites, and target community areas for planting to enhance the city's open space plan. In the summer, we'll be moving toward planting in neighborhood parks, and in the fall, we will be removing invasive species, especially bittersweet and knotweed, from the banks of the waterways. All the while, we will continue our removal of trash from long forgotten dump sites throughout the city. I come to you today to express my desires under this motion. I want to offer collaboration from the Lowell Litter Crew to design and install these signs discouraging illegal dumping. I'd like to make a request from the city for the continuation of the recently installed chain link fence through the entire length of First Street, from where it meets VFW Highway to the east to where it ends at Reed Street to the west. Additionally, a contribution of $6,000 for New England native wildflower seed mix to be purchased by the city and provided to the Lowell Litter Crew for immediate distribution throughout the five acres between VFW and First Street. For anyone at home who wants to join, our next event is at the beginning of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail on Saturday, April 17th, 9 to 11.30. All ages and abilities welcome, and we have all the tools you need. Thank you all for your attention at this hour. Council, I've provided this in a letter along with the presentation for your review. Happy New Year and Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you, Brad. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Thank you very much, Mayor. Any questions on this motion? Council Elliott? Uh, no, I'd like to refer it to the city manager. Um, great work. The city certainly can use a new facelift when it comes to trash. So I, I congratulate them um, for, <clears throat> for all the work they're doing. Try to join the next one. Um, Madam Manager, you know, that first street extending that chain link fence, that seems like a <clears throat> really good idea um, to prevent any more illegal dumping. Is that something that we can, as well as a $6,000 request, is that something, I know we just had a finance report where we're doing well, but in light of all of the hours and the tons of trash that volunteers have committed and the interest, uh, is that something that we can We'll look into that. Look into I, 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 my recollection is that fence was installed by the Commonwealth um, okay. last year, and it was part of the Commonwealth land. We can reach out to Mass yeah. DOT. I know they were involved, uh, I believe, with, with the- Tom Golden. Yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll reach out to them, but It just that seems was, to make sense, because that's a, right. it's a consistent area. I know Council Mercy has had the Sheriff's Department out there, and we've had the right. state, and- I don't know, Council Maley, I don't know how many motions you filed, how many times you've been out there, but if that chain link fence will... But we'll, we'll investigate that measure. and find out exactly, you know, who owns what land, as many areas in the city, some of it's state, some of it's city, so we'll right. we'll try and determine, you know, who, the ownership and then try and work together with the state and if we can come up with a collaboration. Well, th we'll look into the $6,000. Thanks to the speaker. Connor Baldwin and, will look into the $6,000. Yeah, Connor will look into the six. I mean, I, I know $6,000, we're, we're, we're budgeting every penny, but is uh, an organization of all volunteers, I think, doing great work. So it, it's a good motion, and uh, we appreciate all the effort to, to clean the city because there are some spots where there's a lot of trash. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Drinkwater? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I wanted to just uh, offer a brief comment um, in, in you know, support of any way we can extending the fence along First Street. Um, over the weekend, um, I participated for a few hours in the, the cleanup um, in the area between First Street and, and Route 110 along the embankment. And I can say I spent um, most of my time in, in an area just beyond where the fence currently ends along First Street, uh, picking up the contents of about probably eight to ten um, bags of trash that were looked to be tossed from first street down the embankment um they, they were torn apart trash all over the place i mean it was it was stark uh to see the the difference um in, in the amount of of trash and litter um th there was you know just after the fence ended so just from my my personal experience spending a couple hours over there over the weekend i, I think um it, it would certainly have an impact um on preventing um the the illegal dumping that's a huge problem in that area thank you 
Thank you. Officer Noon. Thank you for the motion, uh, Mr. Mayor. And, uh, you know, uh, you were in most of this trash picking with them, Brad and his team of volunteers and council members, as well as Councillor Drinkwater indicated he was there last week. Um, you know, um, they've done a fantastic job to try to beautify our community, our city. Um, the next stop is in the Highland, but also they plan to do something and also in the Cambodian town area, the Clemente Park areas, and they keep on at it. I mean, every week they spend countless hours. And of course, uh, DPW help in terms of after they pick it, they put it on the side of the street and DPW ca came and pick it up. So uh, this is a great, great work that Brad and his team of volunteers week after week. I know that um, uh, Representative uh, Howard, Van Howard is also involved every week. Uh, so um, I commend them for all their hard work. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the motion. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Uh, while we're under suspension, we'll take 10-5 out of order. Uh, Councilor Elliott, Council of Mercy, a request City Council set up interview process to hire City Auditor. Councilor Elliott. Yeah, sure, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know we received some communications. I did respond to, uh, to Mary Callery. I think we should keep the process standard as we have in the past. Uh, we only received six applications, unfortunately. So um, given that, I would suggest that we, um, I remember the Council select three candidates send it to the clerk and the individual three three individuals that get the highest number of votes we interview um i, I don't know where we want to go i mean to me i don't know um, if we if we have really good qualified candidates quite frankly um and i don't know what what the, the challenge is i know that we did increase the salary but we only get six candidates I don't believe any of them have municipal accounting experience, uh, which to me is, is very important. So that's the recommendation if we can hire those three, but I would also, um, you know, we have to find out why we're not getting more candidates and we're not getting qualified candidates. I'm sure it's the salary, quite frankly, and we're losing our auditors to the smaller towns that are paying significantly more or they're going to you know, business manage school business managers or, you know, finance directors. So, um, I say we we interview three, and if we're not satisfied, then we go back out to uh, advertisement. Councilor Marcia. Yes, I concur with the Councilor Elliott. Out of the six, I I read all the um, their resumes. There are three that are a little bit more outstanding than the others. We submit three of our choices and have Mary Callery tally that and the highest three we'll do interviews for. And there are some that uh, have proper certification. Um, if you, that would be the way that I would do that too. So um, we could give a half an hour to each candidate uh, if you want to do it on a Tuesday instead of coming to the city council meeting, we could come here and interview them one at a time. Three shouldn't take that long. We could really get to know them and see how qualified they are. If by chance you feel that the three do not meet your expectations, then see if Mary can do something of her magic as she's always done before. And I know she's worked very hard, but we can't beg people to come in. They have to be qualified. And I think there's at least one or two that are very qualified. But I don't know that unless I talk to them and hear them firsthand. So that's a good motion that we put together. And we'll continue on with thanks for taking this motion out of order. Any other discussion? We I guess we got two choices, right? So what's the will of the body? Do we want to interview two? two or three people, or do we want to have a selection committee do it? No, so no comments, or do you want to just do Isn't it our job to do this? 
I don't know why we need a selection committee when it's our job to, to do just what we asked to do. It seems like in this day and age, if we have an a object to face, we have to form a committee to have them figure it out. Isn't that what we got elected for, to do it, the job? And I don't see how difficult it is to pick three candidates and send them off to Mary Callery. Yes, I don't think we, we ever had a, a committee uh, before. Uh, look, I understand in the past we'd get 30 or 40 you know, applicants and then it would be, I think we'd narrow it down to, we'd vote for five and then interview X amount, but we only got six. I think we have to interview, see if we're going to hire, and if not, what are, what are the obstacles? Why aren't we getting more candidates? You know, is it salary? Is it, you know, the, the requirements? Is it, um, what exactly is it? Because we, we, we've gone through this the last time, you know? Okay. So, so we'll get the six okay. resumes, pick three, and then we'll interview the three, top three? Okay. Yes. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Right. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you, Mary Callery. Um, Thank you. Sure. Councilor Elliott. Um, so can we just, just on some of the logistics, can we get those to the, we've, all, we've had them for quite some time, the resumes, can we get the clerk those names, he can tally up and we can schedule, can we schedule a time? To do that would sure, not make sense now, now. because we've got to let the candidates know when. I, I think be Mary available. may have to. Usually, she'll have to find out their availability and well, stuff. Right. So. Well. I mean, it, so just. So the council would like to do it on Tuesday night, where there is not a city council meeting, right? Is that the? Was that the? first request or could did did everybody get a copy of all the resumes from the six people subject I, to availability can we just set the next tuesday at five o'clock interview candidates the first one at five second one at five thirty the third one at at six o'clock and um, april 20th it, correct okay all right so april 20th will be temporarily put aside for interviews if we can get to the top and, three people. And as crazy as it sounds, before when we did this, Zoom was kind of, it was kind of a, the first thing we, we, we tried. With the, but now we, you know, if candidates want to Zoom, then we can Zoom them, right? All right. So we'll either Zoom or have them Or the councilors can Zoom, whatever the case may be. Okay. All right. Thank you. Everybody all set with that? Just, sure, Madam just one more question. So if people can get those names to well, to the clerk, to Mary Callery, so she can make arrangements. Like, yeah, Can we get tomorrow. them tomorrow or Thursday? Yes. Yeah. Send them in tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Council Rook? No, did you have something before? Okay. All right. So now we're... What, back to 5-3, right? You're all set? Okay. Uh, communication, appoint uh, Baby Hoot and Stacy Thompson to the telecom board. Motion to accept, Councilor Elliott? No, question, Councilor Elliott? I had a question, um, Madam Manager, on one of the candidates. They live, they live in Westford. Um, and I don't really know her. I know if she works at the CMAA. Do, do we not get anybody from Lowell? Uh, Just say it's a Lowell Telecommunications Board and we're appointing somebody from Westford. And I know she works for the CMAA, right. but it she just works seems for the CMAA and all the people in Lowell, we, I, I'm sure there are individuals that would be willing to serve that are from Lowell. And we, we post, uh, actually, uh, it's my understanding that this was a submitted name. Um, from but this OTC. is a city council appointment. That's what my Correct. question is. And Correct. We've, I've not seen any other candidates, so. I don't think we have any others. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I, I me, just uh, sincerely, I, she's, I think she's probably a wonderful, nice woman, but it's a low telecommunication, and, we're, you know, and, she, and the individual lives in, low, in Westford. We, so. we could try and appoint, uh, appoint, I'm strike that. Um, Post I, again. I'll be honest with you. I didn't even know that this was that there was appointment open. So I don't know how we 
to do an outreach. But yeah, we were contacted. Well, we post um, in, and we send it out to um, community partners. This isn't the only board that we don't get much response for, but um, we were we were advised by. We thought there was one opening, and then LTC, the new director, told us there were two. So, uh, if it's the desire of the council for us to post again and reach out to our community partners again for for more to see if there's more interest, we can certainly do that. Again, I, I just want to be clear, Madam Manager. I, I just feel, and the, she's she's probably a wonderful young lady. I I believe she is. However, um, I, I guess I also feel that there are so many people in Lowell that I think uh, would be willing to serve. I, I can think of a handful off the top of my head that are that have cable shows and that are very involved and might be interested in serving. So that's my yeah. thought. Sure, Councilor Drinkwater. It, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, I agree in an ideal world. Um, if there were, there were a candidate that uh, lived in the, the city of Lowell, that would certainly be a plus. But you know, I think it's also significant to look at um, if candidates spend their, their work day in Lowell, particularly if they're uh, you know, working for an organization that contributes quite a, a lot to the, the city and its residents. So um, you know, while, while I can agree if there were you know, more interest in the position and there were Lowell residents who, who expressed interest, um, you know, that would be something to consider. But I, I just also consider working for you know a, a, an organization that's um, doing a lot of great work in the community to be an important consideration as well. So I, I would suggest that we move ahead, um, you know, with these two appointments tonight. Thank you. Anybody else? So what's the will we want to vote on this tonight? Well, I guess I have another question on the communication. It says that it doesn't require council confirmation. Is that just on yours, or is just that on, on ours? That's what we were. To, there's one. I believe it does. One of them does require council confirmation. One right, the city does. council appointment. Correct. I would. I would like to go out, and if there are no other candidates that um, submit applications, and that we let people know that there are openings on the board, then I'm fine with this. But I just, I just feel that this is there are thousands, yeah, it, thousands of Lowellians that would like to serve. And I just, from, maybe from this very organization or some other organization. So I, I would like to, um, if I'd like to post it, and if there are no other candidates that come forward from Lowell, Massachusetts for the Lowell Telecommunications Board, then fine, I will be happy to support this individual. Madam That's all. Ninja. Yeah, I, so that was, uh, Davey was the only applicant. It was posted. Um, she was the only applicant. Um, Stacy Williams was submitted by LTC. Well, and with all due respect, we're not doing a good job in getting our, our, our appointments out there because I, I can assure you there are many other folks we, from we, many other communities, organizations that might be interested, so. And, so. and we can certainly repost it, but we do send it, we do post every position and we do send it to a number of organizations so we can do that again and maybe the discussion of it will gender you know engender some some interest but I just want you know okay I was just checking the question we we'll vote for it all right that's a Brock so I just I'm curious so it says communication it's not a vote so does the council vote I, I actually or? think there is one vote so that's what I'm trying to get an answer on because um, I thought the agenda packet said there's only one appointment vote. from the manager. Uh, the other one would be from the council, is my understanding. If we can come back to this, if Mr. Mayor, come back to this. Sure. Yeah, I just I, I believe there is a, a vote that is supposed to take place. City council confirmation does require a Correct. vote. <clears throat> Actually. Okay. Mr. Madam Mayor. Solicitor. Sure. Hi. I, I'll be happy to. Um, uh, I think the manager's correct, and um, but if I could just uh, double check on that and report back, um, I'll I'll text the manager as soon as uh, I have an answer on on that issue. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll put that aside for a few minutes. Uh, we'll get into the votes by city manager. Um, <coughs> sure, madam. Um, if we could take six one to six eight, and bundle them all together. 
and anyone that wishes to speak on any of them, they're welcome to do so. Okay, motion by Council of Mercy, a second by Council of Rook to bundle. Six one to six eight. Six one, vote on ballot question, mayor election. Um, so permission to waive the full reading, second reading, vote on ballot question, mayor election. Six two, vote to accept and expend 17,846.67 FY21 first responder, no locks grant. Six three, um, authorize city manager to accept and expend from Massachusetts Department of Fire Services grant regarding FY21 firefighter safety equipment in the amount of $32,000 for the city of Lowell. 6-4, vote and accept and expend 245-185 vaccine capacity and confidence. 6-5, vote and accept <coughs> expend 59,241 grant from the Commonwealth, of, Commonwealth Amend Emergency COVID 19 response. Vote to apply and accept expend fire safety grant. Vote the license agreement 370 Jackson Street. Lowell Etna Roof top 10 year non cost. And 6 8 vote special act, special act number of sign of quality voters required by candidates for local elective office. I need a motion to adopt by Council Mercy, a second by Council Rourke. Roll call. <coughs> Council Noon. Yes. Council Rourke. Yes. Council Samaras. Yes. Council Chow. Yes. Council Conway. Yes. Council Drinkwater. Yes. Council Elliott. Yes. Mayor Leahy. Yes. Council Mercier. Yes. It's nine years. Constable Bonds, communication, city manager requests approval uh, of Constable Bonds for Emma, Amario, Ronald, Bertham, John Brulette, Stephen <coughs> Brulette, Raymond Lamy, Juan Jerez, and Kevin Whippen. Need a motion to accept by Councilor Drinkwater, second. Yeah, mo that's what I said. Uh, motion to adopt. By Councilor Drinkwa, second by Councilor Chow. Roll call. Councilor Noon. Yes. Councilor Rourke. Yes. Councilor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Chow. Yes. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Drinkwater. Yes. Uh, Councilor Elliott. Yes. Mayor Leahy. Yes. Uh, Councilor Mercy. Yes. That's nine years. Report subcommittee. Any subcommittee reports? Elliot. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll be brief. The transportation, because there are a number of subcommittee reports. Uh, the subcommittee on uh, transportation met um, on March 30th um, regarding two items. One was an update on the status of all the bridges uh, and construction improvements um, throughout the city that we did get an update from the city and uh, city uh, DPW commissioner. Um, a number of projects, um, well, I won't give the time frame on all, but they're all progressing well. I did question some of the locations throughout the city that are under mass DOT oversight, and you know, can we get, uh, there seems to be little personnel sometimes um, and progress on some of the bridges, uh, but um, Christine Clancy is going to reach out to Mass DOT and the, and the engineers on site to see if we can, you know, get more personnel um, on uh, on getting some some of those bridges completed. So the Lord, there was an update on Lord Overpass. There was an update on the Central Street Bridge. Uh, there was an update on the VFW. Uh, the Tiger bridges are also on target on schedule. And uh, there were some um, some questions on whether we can uh, change, at least on the Lord Overpass, at least change the traffic pattern a little bit because it's backing up significantly going out the bridge. And that was to alter the left-hand turn signal. <coughs> Pardon me. 
left-hand turn signal going uh, to um, Jackson Street, Middlesex Street, Appleton Street. That's where it's creating a, a significant log jam. Uh, the second item um, that was referred was the master plan that was presented to city, city council and a presentation was made. Um, this was as a result of the motion uh, by Council Noon to have the city manager direct the DPD to create a plan and a timeline um, to update the comprehensive plan and use the planning process to develop a citywide zoning amendment or amendments to allow for more affordable housing. So the presentation was given by um, Camillo Espita. Help me, Madam. Espatia. Espatia. Um, excuse me. Sorry, Camillo. Uh, and Francesca Sigliano and Jess Wilson. Uh, they discussed the process that's going to be used, um, hiring a consultant, looking for funding um, to update uh, the master plan that um, currently, believe it or not, uh, is nearing 25, 2025. So it's important that we begin the process of uh, the first phase of planning aligned with our current city planning efforts. Um, and we need some planning activity to implement um, the new master plan. So th that's really the update on this. Um, there was discussion of, um, which is, will come up in my next subcommittee report uh, regarding uh, changing zoning across the city. So I, I know this was part of the motion um, relative to developing a master plan and uh, I just want to say, and it'll come up in my next report, that I don't feel that we should be changing um, zoning amendments across the city to allow for more affordable housing. I don't think that we should be changing the zoning that we have worked on uh, implementing back in 2004, it's it's a good zoning. It it took it took years, quite frankly, of community outreach, meeting with stakeholders, meeting with neighborhoods, um, putting together uh, neighborhoods that are consistent with each other. Um, and before that, there was spot zoning. There was multifamily here. There was um, two family, single family, and it was. Um, the zoning code was merged to create distinct zones and I, th and I think they're, they're working in the neighborhood, preserving the neighborhood characteristics in those various zones and, and all of Lowell's unique neighborhoods is important. It's important and there's, there are regulations in place, there are uh, processes in place um, to meet affordable housing needs, whether it's an in-law apartment or um, an attached uh, accessory dwelling unit. Um, and, I, and I also know that uh, there's Housing Choice Act that was implemented that we will have a presentation at some point. But I just want to, you know, the master plan was presented. It's a good plan. But in terms of this motion to, um, to include the use of the planning process to develop a citywide zoning amendment, I, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that should be part of the planning process. There's a zoning code and then there's a master plan progress. So um, there was no recommendation. It's not a report of progress, but um, I, I don't believe that that is a wise move considering the zoning code that's in place, the, uh, the special permit, uh, the neighborhood character, character and residential um, process that was put in place. Um, I, I don't feel that's part of it. And I don't know if we need a motion or not, but. I support that we need to do a master plan. I support the, that we uh, we need to modernize it uh, moving forward, but um, I, I I don't think that's uh, that should be included as part of the process. That should be separate and distinct. So um, I don't know if we need a motion or not, but um, as it stands now, I, I believe, and I'll ask you, Madam Manager, or the clerk, that according to this motion, if we, are the, we support the motion uh, to, to move forward with planning and include citywide zoning amendments. Um, so I make a motion that we proceed with, the, with a comprehensive master plan, uh, but <clears throat> not use this criteria for, to, to, to change citywide zoning amendments. I'll second that. 
You, you're still on the transportation report, right? Well, th th this report was sent to transportation, so that's what I'm, that is what I'm on. The master plan was sent to transportation, right, wrong, or not, okay. but. Um, All right. Uh, so that, that's the motion because I, I believe we need to do a master plan. The one we have in place, 2025, will expire. We need to plan. We need to look at many other elements, but blanketly changing zoning across the city. I, that's I don't I, oh, I don't okay. think that makes sense. Okay, Council Murphy. I second that. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the uh, Council Elliott is talking about the um, zoning of this report. Um, I'd like to suspend the rules and take. 10.14 out my motion which deals with this very issue 10.14 uh, request right, okay. I, I don't have any objection but but I'd like to vote I think that we should vote on on the motion first and then go to the next motion because right. we have to adopt the plan okay to proceed with the with the master plan that was the motion okay right um, Madam Manager, I, I just want to be clear. I, we're not adopting a master plan, but I, I, I take your point: is to not have a directive for citywide zoning changes. But, but I, the master plan is is this isn't the master plan. But it, but I I think I just no. I think you hit the I think you hit the nail on the head. You're right. I we need to to and I completely support. We need to do a master plan. And I support that process, but the directive that's included in this motion, uh, to me, should not be included as part of that whole process. And that's what my motion yeah. And is there's about. not in, in understood so that there shouldn't be a, a directive to the planning staff to do correct wide sale right zoning changes. Correct. Right, so we'll vote on the motion. Yeah, first. we'll vote on that. Okay, uh, Councilor Drinkwater, you have a question? Just yeah, to to clarify, I guess. Um, question to the, the maker of the motion. I mean, I can understand not um, issuing a specific directive. Um, I also want to be careful not to rule out um, anything that could be a part of the, the planning process. I wouldn't want to preclude, you know, consideration of, of zoning changes. So I guess before voting on it, I just wanted to kind of clarify um, what the, the intent of the motion was. And I'm fine with not issuing directives. I would hesitate to preclude anything. I think that's directed toward me, but the maker of the motion was Council Noon. Oh, yes. And the and the maker and the motion that was voted to the transportation subcommittee probably should have went to zoning, but it doesn't matter. We had a discussion. Was yes to update the, the comprehensive plan, but it, there is a there is a directive to use the planning process to develop a citywide zoning amendments to allow for more affordable housing. To me, that says we're going to update the master plan. And as part of that plan, we're going to change, we're going to include provisions to change zoning uh, for that particular purpose. So that's why I don't feel that directive should be part of it f for the planning staff. Councilor Drinkwater, then Councilor Noon. I, I mean, it's my feeling that in the wording of, of the motion, I mean, it, it, it doesn't bind us to do anything. These things, you know, any changes to zoning would have to be, I believe, you know, voted on. Uh, they wouldn't just be ushered through as part of the planning process so um you know at the risk of precluding anything i i, I think the wording of the motion uh, is okay I, I think it would be prudent to consider uh these things and i don't think it, it binds us to anything so i you know i i don't have any issues with the the wording of the motion is and you know it, i would not support any amendments to the the motion to preclude consideration of zoning changes okay. Councilor Noon. thank you mr mayor uh, when I file motion to update the master plan, I do envision that when you look at the master plan, there'll be, you know, and I do envision that there's going to be some talk on the zoning as well. It may not be a whole, you know, city zoning change, uh, just that, but I, I have a feeling that it has to do with, it has some part to do with that. Uh, that's why I filed it, you know, motions to have it also looking at zoning you know, uh, 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 as well. Uh, but I have no problem. I have no problem separate the two. If you wanted uh, to just do a master plan and, 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 and not touching anything about zoning at all, I'm, I'm fine. But I'm not, I'm not the expert, you see. 
uh, 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 people at your, uh, uh, your Madam Manager, your staff, the, the DP, the people who, or, or, or the developmental service people who would know what they're doing as they put together a master plan. Because I, re I recall the last time uh, uh, they look into those uh, as well. I mean, I, I looked back in 2004. I wasn't on the council, but I just go back, I looked at it, I do some you know, little study. But again, I have no problem separate the two, not at all. Not at all. Thank you. Um, Madam Manager. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, again, state, which I think I stated at the Neighborhood Subcommittee, and, and that is the, uh, when we look at 2004, when there was a zoning change significant in the city, um, it had been years in the making, as Council Elliott said, and it was outreach to everybody and neighborhood groups and people were involved in the planning process. And that was not something that was being recommended at this time. That's a huge matter, and it's not something that's done um, one off on, on a master plan. You know, so so I, I just want to be clear that we're not directing, because it's a very different order to direct the planning staff to go about zoning changes citywide, because that's not something that my administration is recommending at this time. I just want to be clear. So it's not to say we wouldn't update the master plan as was presented, but the zoning piece is very different. So it, I think it should be separate and, and it's not a recommendation. It's up to the council if the council wanted to do something along that line, but that's not part of the recommendation to make zoning changes across the city. Thank you, Council Rook. Yeah, I, I would agree with Madam Manager. I don't, I don't see how they're tied in together. I mean, I, I think that the housing report that we got back was just suggestions of what of what could be done to a motion filed by Council Newman and myself. I, I don't take it as a it's either 100 percent you accept it or you don't accept it, right? It's not a one shot package where you got to accept everything or or nothing, right? You know, and I, you know, Council um, Elliot spoke about in-law apartments or or you know something like that for seniors, right? And I don't think it's allowed in the city right now. Um, you know, so I mean, there are certain parts of the report that I don't think are feasible, but there are other parts of the report I think that should be talked about and discussed. Um, you know, and if, so if we're voting on throwing the whole report out to go forward with the master plan, I don't know if that's, you know, prudent or not. Um, but I've just, you know, I guess just for, for some clarity on what, what we're voting on, you know, I think there are some parts that, that you know, can assist you know, our seniors, um, you, know, you know, we talk about diversity and equity in the city. There are certainly some parts that assist in that area as well. Uh, you know, young families that, that graduate from school or, you know, just get married and they want to live in law. I mean, there are suggestions there that, that would help out too, you know. I don't, I don't know if we want to be that exclusive to, you know, to people, um, but I think it's, it was just given to us a few weeks ago. And as, you know, I agree with the manager, this is a, you know, multiple year um, thing that we could look at. Um, so I'm not sure just throwing the whole thing out tonight uh, would, would be the right choice. Thank you. Council Mr. Elliott. Mayor. Yeah, Council Mr. Elliott Mayor. first, then Council Conlon. Council Elliott. Okay, can I, can I bring a little clarity? And because there were two subcommittee meetings. There were two reports. B believe it or not, there were five motions on affordable housing that have been filed over the course of the last several months. So I understand that's the focus. My concern and the purpose of the motion is that we are about to develop a master plan for the next 20 years, specifically in the motion, and this is the Council Drinkwater. This specifically directs, as part of the master plan, that the zoning code be changed. And I don't want to direct the planning staff to say across the city we're going to make zoning changes after in 2004, after years, we put a code in place. So. If I'm reading this motion and I'm at the, the planning and development staff, I'm saying, okay, well, we get to we get to develop a plan that's going to include zoning changes across the city to accommodate more affordable housing. So I don't think that directive is um, is advantageous. Maybe because I was I've been here and we've seen the zoning changes, and we we know what what was the city was like and what it's is now. We had Adam Bakey and George Peroikis and the planning staff put together what I think 
is a very valuable document and ordinance in the city that maintains what we have and is working. That does might need some changes occasionally. That's why there is planning zone. That's why there's a planning board. There's a zoning board of appeals. There's a special permit. There are variances in place. So we're protecting the property rights of the very people that invested their life savings in every neighborhood. And when we do get to the next report that was um, submitted, uh, that was discussed at the zoning, uh, uh, zoning subcommittee, then we will discuss. These are options. However, this says when you're doing the master plan, include zoning changes in it. And I don't think that's the right approach. That's all. So you vote against it. That's fine. But I think I'm just trying to preserve what's in place and still develop a master plan for the, ne <clears throat> for the next 20 years. Who is that? Uh, Mr. Conway? Conway, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, I agree with uh, Councilor Elliott on this. As far as, as, far as I'm concerned, I, I, I don't agree that we should be having zoning changes in, in the master plan. Uh, it, you know, and, and uh, it has been brought up that there's been a, a number of different motions that the theme is uh, more affordable housing. You know, I think we also have to take a look at uh, what I would call the integrity of, of neighborhoods. And I think that certainly has to, I think we have to protect those, the neighborhoods. If you take a look, look at the data. The data, we, we have 351 towns and cities in Massachusetts. Now the goal is to reach 10% or more of affordable housing. Um, and at this particular point, we actually have 15.6% uh, of affordable housing. We've got uh, 5,180 units plus the 1,230 Section 8 uh, mobile uh, vouchers. And that comes up, is that up to 6,460 with 15.6%. Uh, that's incredible when you look at the state. Out of the 351, there's only seven that have a higher percentage than we do. So I think that, you know, we certainly are, uh, we're doing our part and, and we're doing actually more than our, our, our part. So again, I, I don't want to see the zoning changes. Uh, and, and these are things that have been in place, have been worked on for years. Uh, I, I don't want that included in the, in the master plan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. All right, so where are we? We're going to vote on the motion. Roll call. Okay. Roll call. Just repeat one more time. I apologize. And I thank <laughs> Councilor Elliott for his explanation. Uh, you know, I don't disagree with it, but could you just hear the motion again, please? What we're voting on? Yeah. You have the motion to repeat back. Yeah, I did. The motion read the Councilor Councilor Elliott would would um, forego. I'm going to go back to get it. Uh, look, I'll make the motion again. I, I think that we should adopt the procedure that was uh, presented at the subcommittee meet, subcommittee meeting to proceed with the master plan as presented. However, I uh, remove the directive to include um, zoning changes citywide as part of the planning process. Citywide zoning changes. Roll call, please. Council New. Yes. Council Rock. Yes. Council Samara. Yes. Council Chow. Yes. Council Conway. Yes. Council Drinkwater. No. Council Elliott. Yes. Mayor Leahy. <clears throat> yes. Council Mercia. Yes. Eight yes. Okay, the second report, and I understand, I, and I know Council Mercia wants to bring her. Um, uh, motion in which kind of coincides there was a second meeting it was a housing and zoning subcommittee meeting um, I think initially uh, just for clarity um, the motion may was referred to the uh, housing subcommittee but the request actually came from the zoning subcommittee so council drinkwater and I decided just to have a joint meeting and I, I believe there'll be further meetings but so council mercy I don't know if you want me to bring in the report or do you want to take up your motion? Because I, I, I just want to interject my motion because 
at the request of some neighborhood group leaders, they, uh, this motion addresses the need to have the zoning for more housing in Lowell report sent to the neighborhood subcommittee, uh, of which Danny Rourke is the chair. The zoning slash housing subcommittee meeting report states that data on this report is presented to show the housing urgency to the neighborhoods. Maybe so, but I would like each neighborhood group leader presented with the report, the zoning for more housing in Lowell report. This report should be discussed in a public forum with every neighborhood group leader be invited to attend so that they may get and give input. That's all I'm asking for this one. And that was at the request of neighborhood group leaders that really didn't know what it entailed. And I know it's rather lengthy, but hey, these are the neighborhood groups that you know make the city what it is. And if they're requesting a copy of it, I'm not gonna stand in their way, I think would like to do that. So I'm figuring if Councilor Rook uh, uh, schedules a, sub, a neighborhood subcommittee, we could have these available to any neighborhood group leader that would um, want one. All right, so <clears throat> why don't we do um, <clears throat> motion to take up 1014 uh, by Council Mercer and by Council Rook. Um, I'll read the motion, then we'll just yeah. go over it. So 1014, Council Mercy, a request report entitled Zoning for More Housing and Low, as discussed in the Zoning Housing Subcommittee, be referred to the Neighborhood Subcommittee as as well so that the report could be available to all neighborhood group leaders. So all those in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. All right, Council Rook. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, Madam Manager, I would just ask that uh, once again, the report be emailed to all the neighborhood leaders uh, so they, they do have it, in, uh, you know, the most updated version. And I, I believe that I am the only person on the Neighborhood Services Subcommittee that is not either on zoning or housing. I mean, I can certainly have it with just the three of us. Um, I don't know if there's a date coming up where Council Elliott and Council Drinkwater are having a, a further meeting, but you know, if, if my if my uh, colleagues on the neighborhood subcommittee would 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 you know indulge me for one night to to have it just for neighborhood leaders, I would gladly schedule it and, and to have it done. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yep. Thank you. All right. So back to you, Council Elliott. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, some of the subject matter that we discussed was brought up during the prior uh, subcommittee meeting. Um, it was Monday, April 5th, uh, both the sub zoning subcommittee and housing subcommittee met relative to the report um, that was sent, um, that was produced or that was referred uh, by Council Rourke and Council Noon. Uh, motion was request manager review current zoning codes for areas to increase housing av availability. Uh, the entire council received a 39-page, well, some of them are referenced, but essentially a 39-page report on uh, zoning for more housing in Lowell. And I will say I understand the manager made it very clear this was just in response to the motion for options that are available. Uh, there are 20 I ideas. I think they're referenced in here by the, by the author. Um, the motion was filed in July, uh, July 28th meeting, and the report was completed uh, on October 23rd. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious why we just got this, Madam Manager. Well, I mean, well that's what the report says. Yeah, it does. It, it does. It does. Why we're just getting this now? Just, I meant to ask you at the subcommittee meeting the other day. Yeah, I, and I've spoken to Eric Slagle. So the, that was a draft, but it wasn't completed. Okay. Others in the uh, in Mr. Slagle's office had worked on this on it since. So the date probably shouldn't have stayed on it, but. Okay. Um, but it was uh, a work in progress. But that's when he left. The, it, he must have left the city. Yeah, he uh, did, and and it, and it right. wasn't finalized until shortly before. And okay. as you said, it was, uh, it was, options, but not recommendations. Yeah, and I know you made that very clear at the meeting because, quite frankly, there are a lot of um, options in here that raised a lot of concerns with neighborhood leaders. But members present were Council Drinkwater, Council Noon, Council Samaris, Councilor. Um, 
Councilor Samaras, Council Chow. The, the report was, as we mentioned, produced by the Planning D Division of Planning and Deve Development outlines 20 options to expand affordable housing throughout the city. Um, I think it does a good job in explaining the rent burden for residents in the city um, because rent is very high. And 55% um, um, of the renters pay 30% of their income on rent. I, I, that's, I think that's nationwide. I think the housing um, demand is, um, is, is very high everywhere, clearly in the city. And um, so and I, getting back to the report, um, I said at the subcommittee meeting, ma Madam Manager, you know, there I, I feel um, some of the statements made by Mr. Mr. the senior planner, we'll mention by name, um, I, I think they're unfair, quite frankly. Um, I think it's uh, the characterizations of the city um, kind of put us in, I, I think, uh, it, it sheds us in a, in a bad light, in my opinion. For instance, the first or second paragraph, the recommendations in this report come from years of saying no. I think that's very unfair, and I don't think there's any truth to it, quite frankly. I think there are, all of us can point to many, many projects. I don't think we've ever said no to, to any of them, quite frankly. Um, <clears throat> quite frankly, I'll reference this report on August 11th. Um, Council Noon made a request for those uh, affordable uh, to compile a list of those projects with affordable housing um, restrictions that may expire, and, and that's good to make sure that they don't. But as was mentioned, there's, there's 5,148 uh, rent uh, affordable housing units um, in the city. Excuse me, 5154, um, not including the, the Section 8 vouchers. So I think we just look at the Hamilton Canal. That's mixed-use housing. Yes, there is some market, but there's also workforce and there's also... Uh, affordable housing component and I think we and I, and I made the motion to bring that project back and include that um, component because I do um, think it's important so uh, you know the other implication I feel is the, that's mentioned in here is you know under the current zoning over two-thirds of the city is zoned exclusively for single-family homes I mean that's you know people want to buy single-family homes I don't think that we're exclusively targeting certain areas that's the way that the city was was zoned and is zoned and people want to buy their homes and they want to protect their properties and I, I that's why we have a zoning code so um, you know I guess those are just a couple of asides but there are some references in here to uh, you know ideas of illegal um, uh, legal apartment amnesty uh, I, I don't think that makes a lot of sense, but I just want to say, look, we, we all support, including myself, I don't think I've ever voted against any affordable housing. Um, however, and, and housing is a demand, it's, it's nationwide. It's not just Lowell, um, but it's a regional solution, and I think that's, to me, in large part, that's what the Housing Choice Act is about. Those areas that are more rich in open space, more rich in land, uh, need to do more to help solve the housing um, the, the housing problem. Um, so, as I think Council Drink, uh, Council Conway already mentioned, we we do a lot in the city, and we reference the number of units, and the state mandate is 10 percent. We far exceed that, and that's a good thing. Does that mean we're going to stop? No, I don't think so. However, there is reference in this port, in this report, that Lowell is behind by 3,400 units. I don't know where we would even put a fraction of those, Madam Manager. We continue to do our share. We're a city of, let's say, probably growing to 120,000. We're in 13.4 square miles. That's 8,100 people a square mile. That's, we have some very densely populated um, places in the city. So can we do more? Yes. But the recommendation, again, in here is to change zoning across the citywide. Oh, one of the recommendations, I, I want to be careful. Um, it's just an option, and to me, that doesn't that doesn't make sense. I don't think we should throw out. Um, we shouldn't just blanketly change zoning, um, you know, throughout the city. That doesn't mean we're not going to look at it, but uh, that is that raised eyebrows to to people that I spoke to, and um, you know, clearly when they talk about exclusively for single-family homes, and you know, changing zoning in those areas, yeah, that's Belvedere, it's Patacaville, it's the Highlands. 
maybe up at Christian Hill where it is zoned as a single family. So um, I'm glad that we're sending this to the neighborhood groups. Again, I, I, I understand it is housing. Um, excuse me, it, they're just options. And uh, there wasn't a report or recommendation that came out of the zoning. It's just this was a report. That th these are the options. Um, and I think that was why it was important to clarify in the master plan um, that zoning changes will not be happening across the city either in, in that or, or, or you know, any other motion. Because there have been a number of motions um, to set up uh, an affordable housing trust. Clearly, there was... Um, you know the Community Preservation Act that can be uh, those funds can be used which is which is a good thing I just think we feel I feel we have to be judicious in um, in how we approach it and there is processes in place that we currently um, currently use and as you know Council Work mentioned yes of course we want to help new families um, we want to help those families that are struggling whether it's you know in law apartments or you know, other circumstances where it does require um, a variance or a special permit. Th those are good things, and that's why the zoning code is set up. Abutters get notified. People know what's going on. There's just not, you know, development being, you know, taking place. So I, I, I know that's a lot, but that's um, the concerns and comments that came to me and that came out of the zoning um, subcommittee relative to to this report, um, and if you look at the conclusions and the next steps, uh, I'm, I'm not going to reiterate. But what was what we just discussed are our recommendations. So I th um, I think when we move move forward and continue to expand and increase, yes, there is there is a need, and there are opportunities. And we will look and, and I will support those. But um, I think the the approach has to be. Um, carefully evaluated uh, when we do that. So I, I'm sure there'll be a lot of discussion on this. I'm sure we'll have more conversations, um, but this report was presented and it is out in the neighborhood groups and they want meetings and they want more explanations as to what can take place. And I will say even at the meeting, people are very compassionate and including myself, we know that there is a need for more affordable housing. Uh, we've, all, we've also taken the track in the city that we want people to, to live the American dream and and, tr and be able to afford their ho their homes. And I remember Julian Steele was very controversial, but if you go down there now, you see it's all home ownership and people who never thought they could own a home own their own home. And I, I think um, that's also something that we have to continue to do. I believe that's what the track of the Low Housing Authority is doing. They have scattered housing sites across the city. I think it's 105, and they're moving towards moving them towards home ownership as well. So. It's a report of progress. I'm sure there'll be more. There'll be more to say, but that's it. That was a lot, I'm sure. Thank you. Councilor Drinkwater. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was um, in the other chair of the joint subcommittee meeting, so just wanted to offer a brief comment. And, um, you know, I think there's been a lot of discussion of the report in totality. And um, there were, as Councilor Elliott mentioned, a number of different um, ideas in the report, um, over 20. Uh, of potential zoning changes. Um, you know, I don't think anyone is suggesting that all of them be adopted wholesale together. At the same time, I, I just want to suggest that um, we also not um, reject it wholesale either. Um, personally, um, many of the recommendations, or not recommendations, but ideas in the report um, are ones that I think are good and, and would support. I realize there's going to be different opinions on that, and I think, you know, the idea um, was to continue meeting on this, uh, on these topics. I and mean, we didn't even get close to uh, delving into many of the ideas in the report in one subcommittee meeting. So, um, personally, I, I hope we can continue meeting, whether it's in joint subcommittee or, or different subcommittees take on uh, these issues maybe one by one. There was a motion uh, made at, at the meeting uh, by Councilor Elliott to uh, request a, a follow-up report um, on some of the changes that were made in the housing choice legislation uh, that recently passed at the state level um, and also uh, specifically um, on changes related to uh, uh, approval of accessory dwelling units. I had highlighted um, 
accessory dwelling units is one of the ideas uh, in, in the report um, that uh, based on conversations I've had, based on you know, past history, I think there is some interest uh, in support in uh, potentially allowing those as a way to um, create uh, more housing supply and also you know, meet the needs of um, seniors in our community who want to age in place, um, you know, who uh, you know, want to create a, you know, what are commonly known as in-law apartments for uh, younger children um, you know, still living at home or, or for, for parents. So that was just one idea and we did request um, a follow-up report on that and there will be a follow-up meeting. Um, my main takeaway was, you know, again, uh, there were so many ideas in here. They, a lot of them, uh, they're complex. They deserve, I think, to be uh, looked at further. Certainly don't have to adopt the thing wholesale, but I'm, I'm hoping we can just continue uh, the conversation and, and, you know, there might be ideas in this report that, um, you know, that have support in the community and in, in this body. So we'll continue to look at it. Thank you. Thank you. So I need a motion or to uh, accept as a report of progress by Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Chow. Arts and Culture. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Art and Cultural Subcommittee uh, met tonight at 5.30. Uh, member uh, Councilor Rita Mercia, Councilor Samaras, also attending in attendance is Councilor, Councilor Drink, John Drinkwater, and from the department, we have Christine McCall, Director of Economic Development for the city, and Superintendent Celeste Bernardo. Join also two speakers, Mary Hart and Jean Winslow. Uh, this is in response to a motion uh, by Councillor Drinkwater uh, to look into a public art and mayoral policy for the city. Um, we learned that uh, from that report, we learned that back in, I think, late 2019, there was a working group uh, convened, um, the city convened that working group that consists of a number of key players, uh, that is representative from the art community, um, key player, National Historical Park, nonprofit organizations, and the city own uh, uh, agencies such as the Cultural Fair and Special Event, in short case, and Historical Board, as well as some private uh, business in the city to look at uh, public art and then venture into uh, public mural as well as permitting process and how we uh, um, uh, get funding to do that. Uh, so um, tonight uh, meeting, um, Christine McCall actually uh, provide a uh, PowerPoint pre presentation uh, and, and also touch on the, um, the proposed ordinance. Um, so the PowerPoint uh, pre presentation was very, uh, 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 you know, uh, compact and the proposed ordinance uh, with some slight change from the previous uh, that the council uh, had received from the last meeting. So a good part about this uh, proposed ordinance is that you know, uh, we want to, what we want to do is that we want to have the city create a map or a list of buildings. Uh, you know, this is a citywide uh, mayoral policy, uh, but for downtown, uh, we can get a map or a list of building that would be, uh, that is a no, meaning that you can't touch that building because of the historical nature of it, or a maybe. Uh, building that is a maybe, you can then go through a process of uh, a permitting process uh, where uh, um, uh, the review of that permitting process will be the case that is cultural affair and special event um, uh, uh, office as well reviewed by the historical park uh, no historical board I'm sorry um, uh, on this ordinance thing uh, and, and so we they read it in very detailed very careful uh, not just any uh, mural um, uh, uh, project can be placed in the, on a building um, uh, they, they have a very detailed, uh, very, uh, you see the report you got uh, tonight, the proposed ordinance on that. Um, uh, so with that, uh, they go through this process, 
after this process, then you know they got approved, and we are looking t for funding. Uh, speaker, uh, the two t two speaker from the art community, Mary Hart, who is very uh, involved, has her own has studio here in Low on Merrimack Street, uh, Market Street. I'm sorry, and Jean Winslow's as well, talking about the quality of art. And we said, you know, Christine McCall, and and we look at the report as well that. That's what we want, the quality of art. Uh, we don't want just to have any mural uh, on the wall uh, in the city, especially downtown, and looking for funding. So, um, so those, those are report. Um, the other, the, with that report, what we did was the, uh, that um, member of the committee uh, vote, have vote to send this proposed ordinance to the law department for a review. And for those um, at home and uh, who want to give some input, you know, when the report, when the uh, uh, re proposed ordinance come back from the law department, they can join in terms of um, uh, uh, give their input. So the inputting process for public uh, is never open and never didn't, it not close. When after you have review from the law department, they can they can they can uh, share uh, give their input as well as during the permitting process when artists. Uh, 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 want to uh, put a, a mirror on the building. Uh, so that is the report. I invite a member of uh, uh, the, uh, the Art and Cultural Committee, uh, Councilor Mercy or, and or Councilor uh, uh, Samaras if uh, they like to add to uh, that report. Thank you. Okay. Need a motion or report? All set, was good. Yeah, need a uh, motion or report. Uh, accepted as a report of progress by Councilor Noon, second by Council Rourke. Uh, Economic Downtown Development Subcommittee. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, Economic Development Subcommittee met this evening in anticipation of a document um, that have you requested. It's, it wasn't uh, in its final form, so we just delayed until that document is ready on the Amazon resolution until that is um, in final form then we just delayed it until um, we delayed the meeting and discussion until that's prepared so the motion was just continued I mean the meeting was the meeting was just continued okay. to a later date huh? sorry okay so we need a motion to accept as a report of progress by Council Elliott second by Councilor Drinkwater um, We we'll go back to 5-3, um, so we need a motion to accept uh, Madam Manager. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so as I had indicated, uh, the appointment of Thavie Hoot, um, that is for the city council, and that would require a council vote. Um, the appointment of Stacy Thompson as city manager, and that does not require a city council vote. So, depending on what the wish of the council is, we could we could post to make sure we're getting. But state, uh, Thavy was the only applicant. That's the wish of the council at noon. Mr. Mayor, I I, I think Councilor um, uh, Elliott's suggestion earlier. I'll take it. You know, I I say I say why don't we uh, take Councillor Elliott's suggestion that is uh, give it, you know, uh, have Madam Manager to put it back out and, you know, um, and then we can, uh, you know, look for other candidate if need be um, then uh, for the next meeting. I'm fine with that. Right, we'll give it two weeks to repost it for a low candidate and then see what happens in two weeks. Councillor Elliott. Uh, look, I, I just want to reiterate, I, I don't oppose this. I just feel that you know, we have a lot of low residents and getting the word out is, is a challenge, I understand. And when you talk to people, I want to get involved, I want to get on the board, and then it's, it's not an easy process. So um, if, the, if she's the only candidate, if we don't get anybody else, again, I, and I know we've all struggled, how can we get a better system? Can we, is there a Facebook page that we can create? And I'm, and I'm not being sarcastic because if people, if people um, like the page, then that when there are advertisements, I mean, openings that come up, it'll go on their page and they'll say, "Hey, I may, I think I'd like to serve on this board," versus putting on the website where someone has to go look. 
if it comes to their, what, what limited I know about Facebook, if we have a page and there's a posting and it'll come up in someone's feed and they'll say, yeah, I, I may like to do this. So it's just a suggestion because um, we, we do post them. Why don't we put them on a Facebook page? Does the city have a Facebook page, Madam Manager? We do, but I don't know that this would be appropriate for that page, but we can look into it. Okay. But we do send it to a list, a very long list of community partners, every, every posting. So, but we can, uh, we can ask them to put it on their page too, but we'll look into it. Um, I mean, I, I understand we send it to partners, but a lot of people may not, that may want to volunteer on, on someone's yeah. mailing list or involved with an organization. So that's all. Okay, thanks. All right, so motion to accept Stacy Thompson, right? Um, oh, we don't even need that. All right, and then for the other one, we'll give it two weeks and then come back with a recommendation two weeks, Madam Manager? Yeah, we'll repost. I, I guess we do Twitter, we do LinkedIn, we do, I, I'm getting all these things from your gallery. So, but we will we'll redouble the efforts to put this post back out. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, we're all done the uh, rep uh, report, right? So now we have petitions, two uh, claims, two property damage, motion to refer a law department for a report and recommendation by Councilor Drinkwater, second by Councilor Chow. Uh, miscellaneous 9-2, Sonia Vasquez requests installation of a handicapped parking sign, 375 Pawtucket Street, motion to refer a traffic engineer for a report and recommendation by Councilor Samara, second by Councilor Conway. National Grid 9-3 requests reconstruction of gas pressure regulation, regulator station and add SCADA system at the intersection of Highland Street and Thorndike Street. Uh, motion to refer to a public hearing April 27th at 7 p.m. by Council Rourke, second by Council Noon. City Council motions. Uh, 10 1 Council Elliott requests city manager provide a report regarding status of the roundabout at the intersection of Old Ferry Road and Bonham Ave, as well as an update on the six month traffic analysis in the impact on traffic on uh, West Meadow Road. Seconded by Council of Rourke. Council Elliott. I'll be brief. It's 9 44. I know we have. 20 motions or something there to get through. This came from the neighborhood um, meeting, Zoom meeting. Um, and the concern is uh, not only the analysis, but speed on West Meadow Road um, has seen a significant increase. And we all know that there was a, a very serious accident um, on West Meadow Road uh, uh, about a year ago. So that, that's the essence of the motion. I'll have more to speak, um, more to say when, when it comes back. Madam Manager, thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 10-2, <coughs> Council Elliott requests council vote to make John Shemley and Gary Seppi Sepi honorary citizens of Lowell. Second. Second. By Councilor Mercia, Council Elliott. I, again, I know it's now it's 9.45. It, I don't want to rush through this one, but um, Council Samaras filed a motion um, to set up an award uh, to, to nominate and, and to appoint um, individuals who have made such significant contributions to this city, both in, in, every, in every manner. Um, and I also, these two individuals also came. I believe that they should be nominated to be honorary citizens of the city of Lowell for their generosity, their commitment, their their, their dedication um, to making Lowell a better place at every particular point when we need them, they're there. So I could go on and on. I'm not sure what the process is. What, does this come back for something, Madam Manager? We haven't sorted that out yet. Madam Manager? Uh, no, I don't believe it does. Um, okay. it, as it was set up on the prior motion, it was um, to have a a plaque, or it's actually not a plaque, a framed certificate. Okay. And present to okay. them at a point where it can be done 
in the council chamber. Okay, great. That, so I'm sure we'll have all more to say, but yeah. I just thought, thought it was important that uh, their, their, com their contributions are immense um, for such a long time. That, and I'm sure there'll be more that will be forthcoming, but I thought these two individuals should, uh, sh should be nominated. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 10-3, Council Elliott requests city manager provide a report regarding the status of the triannual inspection of rental units, renewal certificates per city <coughs> ordinance. Seconded by Second. Councilor Noon. Um, Councilor the motion speaks for itself. I'll, I'll wait for the report. I know I filed this in January of last year and we kind of get caught up with so many other, um, other priorities. But I think it's important to find out where, where we are at. And um, so thank you. That's it. Thank you. Councilor Rock. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, my, my guess with this uh, response is going to be they're probably behind, right? I mean, you know, they have right. people have left the department. Uh, we just had somebody, you know, a, a, uh, um, a uh, manager or advisor just left again, right? And, you know, I know we talked earlier about some money being used for, for the lights uh, over at the Bottle School in the fields, which is a great idea. But, it, you know, when the um, requirements come in for the, for the new money to be used, I mean, that department, probably more than any department in the city, just needs more help, right? I know that they're low now to begin with. When they're fully staffed, they're, they're very low. Uh, and we count on inspections uh, a great deal, um, you know, to, to problem properties and, you know, when they get uh, calls for, from, from neighborhoods and um, from residents in the city to, to, to look over uh, certain properties in the city. So, um, you know, maybe just a precursor to the report, if, if someone could be added to see you know, what could we do? I mean, we could double the staff and inspections, right? And probably still be behind uh, on, on a lot of the work there. You know, through no fault of their own. Um, you know, I understand you know, the permits that are filed and, uh, you know, trying to get back. Uh, you know, I think we have one uh, electrical inspector, one plumbing inspector for the city, right? I mean, you know, for a city this size, um, in the amount of residents that it serves, you know, it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's a daunting task. And, you know, credit to the people that, that work in that department. Uh, but I think we really need to look at um, you know, maybe revamping it or how we do it and so forth. I know Council Noon had a motion about, f you know, electronic filings uh, and, and so forth, but uh, it, this has been a problem for years in, in the city. It's not new t to this time, um, but, you know, hopefully maybe with, with the influx of, of uh, money coming in, uh, we can address it and hopefully uh, try to solve some of the problem. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor, Council Elliott? Well, I, I agree. It's it's a chronic problem, and when you drive through the city, and and we talk about affordable housing, and um, which is important, and you look at the conditions of some of these properties, and and I agree. I think, you know, we could double the staff, and that's not going to solve all the absentee landlords that just do not uh, keep up their properties. But you know, part of the ordinance was um, to make sure that they're that they're up to code. So. I think we maybe need to take a look at you know inspectors. How many we have, and uh, how many uh, how many do we need? What, what's the what's the desire? What's the demand um, by neighborhood to keep up with with these inspections? And I, I know that I mentioned a registry in the past to register the the property owners to register. I mean, just for people at home, if you're watching it this late at night, you know when they're supposed to get every time someone moves out an apartment, they're supposed to be inspected and get a permit. So. That, when the report comes back, we'll have more to say. Sorry, I know it's late. Yep, thank you. All those in. Just because, because Elliot had his, his motion. I remember filing a motion a while ago about, um, you know, the property owner's name and contact number to be placed on a, a rental property. Um, just maybe to update to see where that's going. I understand that that goes to the instruction department as well, so it's not a, a shot at them, you know, for, I haven't got a back yet, but just, just maybe an update on it to see uh, in assisting, uh, you know, the city and, and the neighbors uh, of, of a property. Uh, that's what we talked about, you know, if it's a problem or not. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 10-4, Council Elliott requests city manager DPD provide a report <coughs> regarding reestablishing the two, three family owner occupied center program using CDGEG funds, two for the low. Seconded by Councillor Noon. Motion speaks for itself, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Elliott, Councillor Conway, request city manager provide a report regarding the number of complaints, citations on illegal housing units in the city. Councillor Elliott. 
I'll defer to, I've been speaking enough. I'll defer okay, to I'll Council wait. Conway on this, but it's a, it's a big problem in the city with, with illegal units. Council Conway. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, I think that, uh, uh, I think that uh, Council Elliott is, is, is obviously correct on this. There is a, a major problem. And I think some of the types of illegal units that uh, we encounter uh, are, are units without the, uh, its own gas or electric uh, meters. Uh, there's also basement units. I mean, there's a number of different uh, illegal type units, a unit without outlets uh, that are uh, electrically uh, grounded, um, like a two pronged outlets. And also I think the, uh, many of these places haven't been, uh, it's not modern electrical systems. And, and the problem with it very quickly is the fact that these Ill illegal units uh, there's no inspections from the city. And I think that's a big problem, uh, especially with the, uh, you know, the building and the fire codes. And sadly, uh, we've seen uh, too many fires uh, that, you know, that because of things not being up to code and consequently, um, you know, can result in uh, even loss of life, which we have seen. So again, I look, uh, uh, I, I think that uh, it, this is something that we're going to be talking about uh, uh, in, in a lot more uh, council meetings down the road. Thank you. Council Elliott. Um, just briefly, could Ms. Madam Manager, could we look at 842 Varnum Avenue? It's my understanding that that was, it's been a troubled piece of property and it was multi, it's zoned two family, but they're actually, uh, that's where the, the terrible, terrible fire took place with that woman. Um, my understanding is there are three meters on that um, structure right now, so it, there's, I'll wait for the report, but uh, an example of, uh, the, it, it, there's always been illegal units at that house. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes there's a common area of meter though too, so wait for the report. Council 10-7, uh, Council Conway requests law department uh, prepare special legislation, legislation to reduce the number of required voter signatures for district candidates from 150 to 50. Seconded by Second. Councilor Noon, Councilor Conway. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Just very briefly, I mean, we have over 60,000 uh, plus registered voters, I believe, in the, in the city. And, uh, you know, I think because of the lawsuit, uh, that uh, we're mandated to, uh, to change our election process. And therefore, uh, our city has been broken up into uh, eight different districts. And, and because of that, we're talking about 12.5% uh, of that voting uh, number. So when you're going out to get the uh, signatures, uh, that obviously kind of, uh, that, that causes a, an issue trying to, to get the um, uh, the signatures because you only can get them from your specific district, and also uh, which compounds the problem is the is the COVID uh, situation that we've been dealing with. A lot of people, you know, you can't have parties, you can't have uh, uh, gatherings, and I think people feel uncomfortable uh, you rapping on doors to try to get uh, 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 trying to get the signatures. So I thought that uh, it might be a good idea to take that. Uh, and go back to the 50 uh, signatures for those district uh, uh, races. Thank right. you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else, Councilor Rock? Yeah, can I just say, so is there a difference between Councilor Conway's motion and 6.8 that we did tonight? Yeah, the, um, we, we prepared the vote in anticipation of if the council approved it because it has okay. to go to the legislature. Just making sure I did, wasn't yep, it, it's anything. the Sorry. same, but we want to get it off to the legislature, not come in two weeks later because. Actually, the motion, uh, Councilor Conway. Thank you. Okay. So, do you want a roll call on this then, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, no, just Councilor. Uh, no. uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just uh, maybe it's off from that a little bit, uh, more like a, a comment slash question. Um, what, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Madam Manager, would you also explore the possibility, you know, because uh, Councillor uh, Conway, to make the motion, mentioned, you know, it's difficult to, it's, it's not difficult, but with COVID-19 protocol, and a lot of people are fearful of coming out to parties, but also I think a lot of individuals 
are fearful of uh, if you will go to market basket try to get nomination paper signed. They are also fearful of even holding pens, public pens or pens or what have you to sign the papers and I was just wondering if you could explore the idea of having electronic signatures, uh, see if that would be a, a possibility um, to get the, the amount of signature, whether 50 or 150. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 1010, uh, Councilor Noon requests city manager work with Director of Parks to explore installation of basketball rims and nets at city parks. Seconded by Councilor Rook. Councilor Noon. Motion speaks for itself. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 1011, Councilor Noon requests Mayor Leahy recognize month of April as Victim Rights, uh, Victim rights Month. Seconded by Councilor Elliott. Councilor Noon. Well, April is uh, the Victim Rights Month. Uh, it's time to renew our commitment to serving all victims of crime, to acknowledge the achievement of, uh, in victim service and the allied profession, and to honor those who have gone above and beyond of their service to others, and to remember crime victim and survivors. So it's fitting that uh, 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 the city of Lowell uh, recognize the month of April as the Victim Rights Month. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Um, 12, 10, 12, Council of Samaras requests city manager have proper department contact state regarding the issues at the end of the low connector in Gorham Street. Second. Seconded by Council of Noon, second uh, Council of Samaras. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, we just recently had another tragic death at the end of that highway. I mean, how many are, are we going to have before something's done by the state? I think many of us know originally when that highway, the connector was built, I believe it was the end at the auditorium. We're never going to see that in our lifetime, or I think in anybody's lifetime, that to happen. But I, I want you to think about what the problem is. When you think of a highway and you think of leaving the highway, you leave off the highway via a ramp. And usually you'll see a speed limit sign of 25 miles an hour. But how many times you're driving in your car and people will hit the ramp at 50 miles an hour knowing that they have enough time to slow down? When you're coming down to the end of this ramp, you have the ramp going to South Lowell, you have the ramp going to Thorndike Street, and you have a dead end. You have a, a, a red light and a wall to stop. And I think people who are new to Lowell that don't know the, uh, the what at the end of the uh, connector, you know, especially if it's a dark night, a rainy night, that's what's happened in the past. And I think we have to request the city manager really makes an appeal to the state that we have to do something. And, and my suggestion would be to actually close off the rest of the highway going into the, going into Gorham Street like a single ramp. So people will know once they hit the ramp, it goes from two lanes to one lane and they'll slow down. Otherwise, we're just going to wait another six months to a year or maybe a year and a half and we're going to face another death. Something has to be done. So I'm just requesting the city manager uh, use her resources to uh, contact the state to see what we can, can be done if we can get a report on what, you know, what rights we have to make some changes here. Thank you. Thank you. All those in council of uh, Briefly, I know it's late and we're above that hour. The state is I believe, Madam Manager, correct me, we had a transportation subcommittee meeting probably about a year ago that the state is currently re recommending in, in the process of designing a roundabout at the end of that. That's the recommendation because um, we've asked for rumble strips, we've asked for so many other things and they say no, but there, it is going to be a roundabout. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, Madam Manager. I, I thought that's what Mass DOD presented to the Transportation Subcommittee. Yeah, so, so Mass DOT has been designing an end of ramp. Um, we'll get an update from them where they are. Um, at one point, uh, I think there was talk about doing that, uh, starting construction this year, but we haven't heard any more from them. So we will. I will certainly reach out to Mass DOT and find out where we are as far as their planning process and, and their construction schedule. Mr. Mayor, 
Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I need a hold on a second, please. Need a motion to. Huh? I gotta do. Finish his motion. Clock. I need a motion to go past ten o'clock, right? No. All right. Go ahead, Council Samaras. Uh, oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I, I have a similar motion that? down. Ooh. All right, yeah, Councilor yeah. Samaras and Councilor Chow. Oh, okay. okay. No, uh, Councilor Elliott's right, but my, my concern is I don't even think we're going to see the, the roundabout. So I'm just looking at maybe even something temporarily. I mean, the, the lane could be uh, narrowed down. So Makes the thing sense. Is, I agree. You know, it, it's uh, Councilor, you know, we're right. We know what, what the plans are, but we know this plan may be so far off in the distance. We should do something, and that's just a suggestion. Thank you. Agreed. The easiest thing would be to destroy the road so you can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I have a similar motion down at 10.18, permission to, uh, can you hear me okay? T 10 o'clock roll. Right. Are we finishing up this motion or what? Are you all done with that? No, I was going to say, if it's within the same, um, Discussion. I want a permission to bring my motion up to. All right. I got to do motion to go back to the ten o'clock rule okay, though okay, for us. Roll call. Wave roll five. Uh, motion by Council Rook, seconded by Council Elliot. Yes. No. All right. We'll put the other motions on for next week. Thank you. Oh. I thought it was two. I thought it was two. I thought it was So, 10.13, you want to listen to Huh? Oh. All right. Yeah, okay. Cool. Do we know who hit who?